and welcome to Pflugerville High School. The field, if you will, as the Smithson Valley Rangers and College Station Cougars get ready for some state quarterfinal football. Brian Hill, Tony Brubaker, glad you could join us here on the Ranger Network as we're expecting fourth round playoff kind of football today. Two really good teams playing really well at this time. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, uh, fourth round of the playoffs, there are no bad teams, and so we definitely didn't get one of those today. And so College Station is a very good football team, been playing very, very well uh, late in the season. They're, they're peaking at the right time, and so it's going to be a heck of a test. It should be a fun one. Really an interesting look as we go back and look at the history of the playoff run. The Rangers have won three playoff games in a row, and it's been pretty spectacular. Yeah, and the formula has kind of been all throughout the season, really, but especially in the playoffs, has been you know playing great defense, making some big plays on special teams, and offense being opportunistic uh, whenever they have the chances. In that first game, defense played great. Dudzikowski had two picks, and you see here against Manville, had some explosive plays. Kyler Clark had a huge game, a kickoff return for a touchdown and a long one. Uh, and then last week versus Folsher, uh, an offense that had been averaging around 50 points a game uh, for the defense to come in and hold them only to 13. Uh, again, talking about how the formula for the Rangers all year, and they'll need to do it again today, is playing really good defense, making plays in the special teams, and offense taking advantage of the opportunities in the short fields that, uh, that come, come by way of that. And that is the Ranger way. You know, you run the ball efficiently. You make plays in the passing game. Special teams are a big thing for Larry Hill as a coach. Uh, throughout his time at Smithson Valley, but it, it seems to increase every year, the ability in special teams to make plays. Yeah, Smithson Valley, anybody who's ever played for Smithson Valley knows that the, the kicking game is heavily emphasized all week. It's not considered the other phase. It's, uh, you know, it, it truly is harped on and considered one of the three. And, uh, you know, Smith Valley's mantra is, you know, the three things that win football games most of the time is decided by turnovers, explosive plays, and who wins in the kicking game. And uh, Smith Valley has always prided itself on a great kicking game, and it helps this year when we got a guy like Amaya who is very talented in kicking and both punting and kicking. And so we're going to need some big plays in the kicking game today uh, to be able to have a shot to take, take down College Station. Larry Hill in his 30th year with the Rangers, up to 287 wins for him. And Stony Point, Stony Pryor, pardon me, is the head coach of College Station in his first year. And they went to the state finals last year and lost in that. And then Stony comes in, and they're uh, a pretty good team at 11 and 2. Yeah, they're a really good team. And, uh, you know, a lot of people. Uh, know this, but uh, they, their star running back goes down, uh, season-ending injury before the season starts. And so early in the year, they kind of were still finding their way a little bit, uh, particularly offensively, because so much of the offense was based around him. Uh, and so in the first couple games, you know, they dropped two games uh, early on because they were still kind of finding their rhythm. First-year coach uh, doing things a little bit different, also changing up the offense. Uh, but I'll tell you what, their last seven, eight games, they've been very, very impressive, and they're playing they're playing really good football right now. And you saw Larry Hill coming out of the locker room. You hear the Ranger. You see the Rangers coming out to, uh, from their banner. Again, one of their losses was at Georgetown in their district, and they avenged that one last week, uh, 52-28 in the uh, third round of the playoffs. So we know they can beat someone as good as Georgetown was because they're as good as anybody in that district. Yeah, and it just goes to show that they, that you know, kind of what we just got done talking about. They've gotten better as the season goes. They're rolling. They drop one early to Georgetown, then they come back, play the same team, and and beat them pretty handily by three or four scores. And so obviously they've been getting better and better, and they're peaking at the right time. And, and they're a really good football team. One of the things we'll talk about today is how senior Chase Sinelik won't be able to play after being uh, banged up a little bit last week. Junior Ryland Walker will be able to come in and make the start for the Rangers. Yeah, and you'll see here, uh, this is the play uh, Chase got banged up on last week. Thought maybe, you know, might be able to give it a shot uh, this week. But, uh, you know, Ryland is, is a, another talented quarterback. A lot of times... Um, when a backup comes in, you know, you might have to lessen the playbook or cut the playbook down a little bit. That's not the case with Ryland. He's gotten quite a bit of playing time this year. Very talented. You see here in the first, he got in the playoffs and threw a touchdown pass versus Cedar Park. Played a lot throughout the year, whether it be late in the game and even some in, in crucial moments. And so the moment's not going to be too big for him. And, uh, and like I said, he's, he's very talented. He's... Uh, He's going he's gonna to be just fine, and, and the offense doesn't really have to change anything when he's in there, and I don't expect, uh, I don't expect the level of productivity to go down. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's tough for Chase. Obviously, he's had a phenomenal season um, and, and been a great leader, 
Um, it, it's a shame that he can't go today, but, you know, the Ranger offense is in good hands with Ryland. And we know Ryland will be able to make all the throws mm -hmm. because this is an offense that, again, wants to run the ball, and he can hand it off as well as anybody. But carrying out fakes, which we've seen him do very well this season, which makes those runs better, but then being able to play action and find a receiver and timing of those uh, pass plays is always critical. Yeah, and, and regardless of who the quarterback is, whether it's Chase or Ry uh, Ryland or whoever, this is not an offense that's going to throw it 40, 50 times a game that's going to ask the quarterback to be the main playmaker. Now, obviously, Chase did a great job all throughout the year making those plays when, when they need to. Uh, but, you know, Ryland, main thing that he needs to do is just go in and manage the game, make the throws that uh, when they're there, and, and, uh, and run the offense effectively. And, uh, and uh, I think he'll do just that. Players out at the midfield area right now for the coin toss. But as we continue to talk about uh, the running game for the Rangers has been primarily Doug Lance as the starter, but then Sowersby off the bench, Isaiah Vivian's off the bench, and David DeHoyas has even had some key runs in, uh, in big games for the Rangers. Yeah, and obviously Lance gets the bulk of the carries, but it's kind of running back by committee. Both uh, Lance, you know, he, he'll probably run – uh, be the running back for about two series and then, hey by the way go play defense next series and so that's when you'll see the sophomore sours become in a little bit different style of a back he's more of a glider and um and then every now and then as much as DeHoyos can handle then uh, he's going to go back there and dot the eye obviously he plays every snap of safety uh, but once about, about every third series or so like to put him in for a change up and he's a guy that can provide explosive plays when he's in the backfield as well rangers win the toss they defer which in a windy day like this that's a big deal because You'll receive the opening kickoff with the wind at your back here, and you get the kickoff in the uh, – you get to um, – what am I saying? They'll kick off with the wind, and then the second half they'll receive, and then they'll have the wind in the fourth quarter because – College Station will take the wind in the third quarter. Yeah, and it's always good, you know, get your defense out there early and, and uh, hopefully get a stop and, and then uh, get a short field for your offense and then obviously getting the ball coming out of half is always good. It's the Rangers and the Cougars. The Cougars 11-2 and two on the season. The Rangers 12-1. and one. We're going to take a timeout. When we be back, we'll have tonight's or this afternoon's kickoff. Got to say that twice in a row. The Rangers on the Ranger Network. For the robotics competition, there was a lot of First of all, getting the robot ready, because we can't go unless we actually have something to compete with. At first, we sketch all our ideas out, and we go around the room and look at everybody's ideas. And out of those, we select a few that we want, and we start to prototype those. So we're given a kit of consumables and non-consumables that we're allowed to use to build the robot, and we can't use anything that's not inside that list. I did programming for a little bit, and we used Natural Language 2.0, and we used Robot C to program our robot. So I built the practice field so that we could run ideas for how we could get more points. So I was a driver for a robotics team, and when I was driving the robot, I, felt, I, I was excited, but I was also nervous at the same time because I didn't want to mess up. I didn't want to be the one who caused our team to lose. But afterwards, I, I was proud of myself. I did not work on the robot this year. I worked on the process engineering notebook. The process engineering notebook is worth 30 out of 100 points in our total points. And basically we put everything in there that we do throughout. So we have a safety section, we put all of our designs in there and our codes, stuff like that. So going into uh, San Antonio Best, with the robot that we had finished the day prior to going. Um, it was nerve wracking to say the least, but after we got past the first round and then the second round and the third round, we started making friends with other schools. We started cheering on other campuses. And welcome back to Pflugerville State quarterfinal action, the Rangers and College Station. Some of the keys to the game that we see going in talk about uh, no empty possessions in the red zone. The Rangers have to be efficient because Obviously, things will be limited in a fourth-round playoff game if it's a defensive battle. Defense needs to be plus in turnovers, which they, the team has been plus 24 on the season. So, uh, And then special teams. 
uh, creating points that way. Yeah, you said it. Uh, special teams and defense has been doing a great, uh, great job all year, creating short fields for the offense and even had a few returns and some big plays. Definitely going to need that to continue and then, uh, we need the offense to uh, to make sure to capitalize when they get in a position like that and get inside the red zone. Need to come away with points. Don't need to um, don't need to uh, give College Station uh, any freebies. And one of the Ranger proverbs or Ranger mottos is a proverb of being iron sharpening iron. In Proverbs 27:17, one of the keys to the game. Clayton Amaya will. Get that football ready to kick off. He's got the wind at his back, which we would estimate somewhere between 15 and 25 miles an hour from left to right. And this one should probably go out of the back of the end zone would be my guess. You would expect that. The end over end kick will sail into the end zone, Tisdale. Their cornerback and sometimes receiver, Anthony Tisdale Jr. was deep for them, but Amaya kicks it through the end zone and we'll see that Cougar offense come out on the field. Yeah, it's a, it's a Cougar offense like we talked about that's gotten better each week and they've been really explosive, scoring over 50 points last week versus Georgetown. Their quarterback, Arrington Mar uh, Maiden, he's got a strong arm and uh, he's got some weapons around him, explosive offense. 6'3 and 185, the junior quarterback, 58%, 1,800 yards, 12 touchdowns, three interceptions. They hand it off on first down. That's the tailback, Aiden Martinez-Brown. The Rangers slow him down and give him just about a yard as they started from the 25, ball now at the 26. Good play by the defense, kind of getting them off schedule a little bit, making it a second and long. They're going to go no huddle, go quick. Martinez Brown's run for over 1,700 yards, and there's a pass out on the right edge. Good job by Jackson Duffy to clean it up as he gets out just past the 30. So a gain of about five makes it third down and four. That was a good play by Duffy. He's the one that came up and kind of took out two blockers to free up DeHoyos, and DeHoyos had good, uh, good pursuit. Big, big third down early here. If they can get a stop, make them punt into the wind here. So third and four from the 31. False start. Motion and then a false start by their right guard, or left guard, pardon me, Noah Sherman. They have four seniors and one junior on the offensive line. Their receivers, all kinds of classes, some sophomores, some seniors, and a junior in that class. That running back, Martinez Brown, just a sophomore. They lost their All-American, Marquise Collins, at the start of the year. He's going to play at Duke. At least he was penciled in going there, but then he tore up his knee uh, early, early in the season, and they've had to make due since. So again, Maiden, Arrington Maiden, now third and nine with the penalty. They'll give it, and a first down run into the secondary. Interesting Clean, call there. Up on the back end. You know, third and nine, you'd think. Yeah. Rangers expecting pass and, and uh, handing the ball off kind of caught us off guard there and ended up big, picking up a big first down. They give it to him again on first and 10. Rangers a little bit better this time, but he'll get four yards up to the 41. Down at the bottom of that pile, the Ranger, Dudzikowski, linebacker. So second and six from the 41. First pass try. Maiden gets pressure, now escapes. Gets up near midfield before he's dragged down. Dudzikowski in the tackle along with uh, McLean Garrett. So now sets up a third and short, third and two. A good pressure early, making him flush, and then a uh, good job of retreating and, and making a play on another third down here. Motion from the far side. And a tackle, but not until a first down. And again, Martinez Brown got just enough. Not a lot of room in there, but he fell forward and gets up to the 48 for a first down. And they're going fast. As everybody seems to do now in the playoffs. They stay with Martinez Brown. Right side breaks through into the secondary. One man to beat. He'll be caught from behind and dragged down, but not until he gets into the red zone at the 18-yard line. Good job by Dudzikowski to catch up and get there. There you see Nicholas catch up. So first and 10 from the 18. 
The steady diet of Martinez Brown, Aiden Martinez Brown. The sophomore continues and this time gets three before he's wrapped up in the middle. And again, call station going fast each play, so it's kind of hard for the Rangers to draw up something different. A lot of times you just got to call base and play it. Um, slow down just a little bit here, so maybe we can get, a, get something going. Play action. They'll throw it a receiver out on the edge. That's the big uh, tight end wide receiver, Jackson Verdugo. He's got the ball inside the five at the, they'll spot him at the two and a half where it's first and goal. Yeah, great, great catch by him. Went up, went up high. Really soft hands for a big guy out there. And they're all American uh, cornerback. Tisdale, Anthony Tisdale Jr. is wide out on the near side now as he comes in for another receiver. But they'll keep it on the ground. Martinez Brown gets to the one before he's dragged down by a host of Rangers. Looked like Herring was among those made the tackle for the Rangers. Now second and goal from inside the one. Big quarterback gives it to Martinez Brown and I think he got in that time and that's a touchdown for the Cougars on the opening drive. Took about three minutes and 30 seconds and they march into the end zone. Yeah, impressive drive by College Station. All started on that third and long, uh, third and nine, and then deciding to hand the ball off. Don't think they were playing for four down territory because they were on their own 35, 40 yard line or so. So really gutsy call and uh, kind of caught the Rangers off guard to, to get that first first down. Then they got some momentum and ended up being able to take it all the way in the end zone. Something you see a lot in big games is a first drive for a touchdown as the kick is up by Connor Young and good. And College Station goes up 7-0. Now the Rangers have a chance. They'll be going with the wind at their back. And they did all that against the wind, which certainly is a plus for their offense. Yeah, I think only really threw one, one ball down the field. I think early on they had a little swing pass out there. But most of that, you know, that's what they would like to do going against the wind is be able to do most of your drive on the ground. Uh, but, again, I think our defense will settle in after that first. It's always hard against a team with tempo and goes really fast to simulate that in practice. Sure. Um, and so, uh, you know, kind of speed of the game kind of gets you a little bit. So I think our defense, now we've seen it once, should be able to settle in a little bit and, and make some adjustments. And if we know anything, we know that uh, the Ranger defense has been an adjustment-oriented defense that you can do something for a quarter or a half, but generally something will change for us to make a change on what they see. Yeah, Coach Worsty and his defensive staff do a phenomenal job, and there's some really good players on that side of the ball. And, uh, and as you can see, the, the, the graphic there on the screen, um, you know, not really – Giving up very much points and creating a lot of turnovers. Rangers plus 24 in the season. Uh, like I said, they'll they'll uh, they'll adjust the speed of the game and, and hopefully um, you know be able to to slow them down coming out in the next one. But we have to we're gonna have to do that. We're gonna have to create some uh, sure. some, some turnovers and some plays in the kicking game uh, because again, College Station's a really good team as we saw in that first drive. Kyle, uh, Connor Young out for the kickoff. The fetus and Clark deep, not very deep. One at the 15, one at the 10 is. Young will kick off into this wind. High end over end kick. Wind knocks it down, fielded by Clark at the 20, and he's tripped up there. Won't get but uh, fall forward for a yard. So from the 22, the Rangers will start first and 10. That's good coverage right there. I think if Kyler was able to make that first guy miss, he had a little bit of a seam there, uh, but wasn't able to come forward and catch that with a whole lot of momentum because that ball was hanging up. So. Uh, we'll see the offense come out and, you know, not really used to having long drives uh, very much, but uh, they're going to have to go about 78 yards here, and we'll see We'll see what Ryland does with his first series. Ryland Walker, 34 of 47 on the year, 290 yards, two touchdowns. One of them came in the playoff game against Cedar Park. On first and 10, Lance gets it. Started left, came back right, falls forward for a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight as the interior part of their defense of Harwell and Johnson were among those in on the tackle. Yeah, and, and this is the College Station defense that has gotten better through the season as well. They're, they're not as big as some of the defenses we play, but all around uh, front seven and back end, they're as talented and as good a defense as we played. 3-4 defense. Walker checks with the sideline. Play clock still at 10. It's a quick pass out of the flash. This is Bafidis with the catch. Gets about four or five yards and gets wrestled down and some late pile or honors. 
Linebacker Jaden Billows among those that spearheaded the tackle. A gain of about, we'll call it three. Brings up third down and five. Yeah, most of the time when, when Defetis gets in space like that, he's going to make that first guy miss and have an explosive play. And when you keep doing that, and eventually he'll probably get one. That was a great open field tackle by the College Station defender there. Big third down. Third and five. Could be a run, could be a pass. Two receivers to the top side. We'll throw it to one of them. This is Clark who catch it, looks in. It looks like he got right to the line of scrimmage to go, and that will be a first down. That was huge for multiple reasons. Obviously, getting a first down, not going three and out after the long touchdown drive at College Station, but also it's getting Ryland into a little bit of a rhythm. Obviously, he's got two early completions on some short throws, um, and so it kind of gives him some confidence and gets him into a little bit of rhythm. So that was a huge play right there. So first and 10 from the 32. Now a couple of tight ends. Little play action as he fakes the run. Now hits a tight end. That is Mason Birch. A good pass play, good pass and catch for a gain of eight out to the 40. Smithson Valley has been very successful all year with that stretch outside zone, so faking it that way, doing a little naked bootleg. Tight end blocks for a little while, and he goes out in the flats. Great play on first down, gets you ahead of the chains. Now it's second and short, might be able to take a shot, um, but uh, keeps you on schedule and opens up the whole offensive playbook here. Shane Bellows, one of their linebackers, got shaken up on the play. He comes out for the Cougars. So the Rangers now second and two from the 40. Lance up the middle, has a seam, has some room, fights for it, almost lost the ball, and I think they took it away from him. As he spun, someone grabbed the ball and took it away, and that looks like that is cornerback Isaiah Pentgraff, and the Rangers turn it over on the fifth play of the drive. Yeah, it looked like a good run. Had picked up the first down by about five or six yards, and the uh, defender came in and ripped that ball out, and um, College Station was able to jump on it. You can see it here. He had it, and the D lineman, I think that was number 60, DeAndre Harwell, just ripped it out of his yeah. hands as on his way down, and obviously that's super unfortunate. Rangers are getting a good drive going offensively. So the defense will have to come up and make a play. Another handoff. Martinez Brown, and there he's in the loose again. Got two blockers as he goes for the sideline. De Hoyas finally traps him down, but not until he's to the eight-yard line. In cha sudden change of play, you know, defense is over there not expecting to be out on the field, and all of a sudden quick, they got to be out there quick, and they get hit with a, with a fast one early, and now they're going fast again. 30-yard run. Martinez Brown again, good blocking through the seam. Has a hole opened up as he gets into the secondary when Weston Ross can bring him down, but that's nearly eight yards. Second and two. As they continue to work quickly, two backs in the backfield now. Martinez Brown gets the carry with a lead blocker in front of him. Just shy of a first down. They'll spot him at the nine. It'll be third down and one. Good play there. Gotten some, finally got a little bit of push in the interior there making College Station slow down and think about this third down play call. Coach Worst, he's able to get in uh, the play that he wants and hopefully get a stop here on third down. Jackson Edwards is their fullback, who's an elite blocker. He'll lead Martinez Brown, left side. He gets stopped. I don't know if he got it. I think he's short. The headline's been coming up from our side. It's close, but we'll have to see. It looks like it is fourth down. Sitting on the field goal unit. If they do, in fact, kick this, whether they make it or not, that was a huge stop by the Ranger defense to keep them out of the end zone after a turnover. Um, Their kicker is Connor Young, 7 of 12 on field goals this year, the longest 35, 59 of 64 in extra points. <laughs> this one from 25 yards out into that staunch wind. The ball down, the kick is up high and goes through. So, we're at 353 in the first quarter and it's 10 to nothing College Station. Again, that was a that was a great job of the, of the obviously you only give up that big first play to get down there but great job by the defense uh, holding firm not giving up a touchdown. Jackson Duffy, one of the elite cornerbacks for the Rangers. We've got a little feature on him as we talk about what he's done the last couple of weeks. Jackson Duffy, the junior cornerback for the Rangers. And as a whole, the, the defense has played very well. 
uh, overall as well. But Duffy will highlight a few things he did last week. Most of the time as a corner, you're asked to cover receivers. Last week against Fulcher when they got in that compact offensive set, no wide receiver. He had to be a run stopper. And his job on the outside is to take on blocks and force the ball back inside. But as you saw there, he actually uh, get, went in there and made a tackle in here. Kind of a trap, too. Had his eyes on the quarterback. Uh, read the stop route perfectly. Read the eyes of the quarterback. Stuck his foot in the ground and was able to make a heck of a catch there and pick it off and run it down and almost score and setting the Ranger offense up on a short field. Uh, I think you'll see it from the back here. You can see what a great catch it was, but um, knew he had safety help over the top, and so he read that, baited the Fulcher quarterback and was able to intercept that ball. Um, and then here he is again in the in the run game. You know, there's there's a lot of guys out there that are supposed to be able to block him. And uh, he does a good job of getting low, dipping his shoulder, and making some tackles in the backfield. Again, the you see there Doug Lance is the defensive end, and they got four guys that end up getting outside of him and pulling. And uh, Duffy does a good job avoiding all those. Not only does he do his job of forcing the ball inside, but he actually makes the play as well. And so he's, he's been playing well, and the whole defense has been playing well in the secondary in particular. Right now, 10 to nothing. College Station has jumped on the Rangers. Another kickoff. This end over end kick will be fielded again about the 20. This is Mafitas. He's got some room on the near sideline. One man to beat. He's in the loose to the 40. If he gets by one more, but he can't as the pursuit catches up. And he's got a good Ranger start to a drive as he's inside their 30-yard line. And that's what we talked about, that one of the keys to the game has got to create some plays in the kicking game. Great job. You can see the hole open up there. Uh, you know, College Station kicked it high up in the wind, thinking that maybe one of the uh, the short of the, the – Guys, not the deep returners might get that. Good job of Bafitas coming up and attacking that. And now we've got the ball starting inside the opponent's 30-yard line. This is the time where we've got to cash in on offense and get some points here. So from the 28, it's first and 10 for the Rangers. Ryland Walker flips it. This is Bafitas, and he put the ball on the ground, but we've got somebody falling on it. One of our offensive linemen or maybe the tight end. Yeah, it is the tight end, Birch. So a miscue by the Rangers. This, though, they hang on to it, though. But they'll lose back to the 36 or 37. Well, so a loss 10 of yards. 10 yards. Yeah, tried to do the little uh, fake block one way, back the other way. Defensive end shot up the field unexpectedly and kind of caused havoc from the get-go there. Now we're behind the chains. Sowers beers tail back. Here's a pass. Got somebody open down the field. It's T.J. Hunt, and he makes the catch inside the five. And the Rangers will have first and goal on a great pass from Ryland Walker to the leading receiver, T.J. Hunt, his 52nd catch of the year. See the replay there. Great job of Ryland giving his guy a chance. Just a little bit underthrown, but he didn't want to overthrow that. And it's, touch, it, it's tough when the wind's at your back to not overthrow the ball. So great throw there. Good job by TJ of concentration with those two defenders closing in on him. Both safeties. Second work. and 20. Huge play there. Gives us a shot to now get some points on the board. So first and goal from the five, I believe. Walker turns the wrong way. The running back goes left. He went right. He'll keep it and go straight up the middle and get a couple of yards maybe to the four. So they'll spot him at the five again and one. I think the running back went the wrong way. <laughs> That's uh, one of the loneliest feelings in the world right there. Uh, when, you, when you come out and you're expecting to hand the ball off and there's no one there and you have that, oh, what do I do moment. And uh, I think the sophomore Sowersby went the wrong way on that because the offensive line was blocking stretch to the right. And um, yeah, and uh, Sowersby went and left. Good job by, uh, by Ryland of just tucking it up in there and not making a bad play worse, though. So second and goal from the five. A little bit of motion. Little flip. This is Bafidis on the H back reverse, and he's into the end zone. That's a touchdown for the Rangers as they cut the lead from 10 to 6 with the extra point to come. Huge drive right there, stem the flow a little bit. All started with the defense getting that, getting a, a stop, even though they gave up a, a field goal, but not allowing a touchdown in the end zone. And then you get a huge special teams play by Bafidis returning it, getting a short field. Huge play by Ryland to TJ Hunt to get us set up, and then Bafidis is there to cap it off. He started the drive, started us in a good spot on the kickoff return, and finished the drive with a good touchdown. So Freund to hold, Amaya to kick. It's up and good. And all of a sudden, what started to be a college station one-way start, a minute 44 to go in the first quarter, and the Rangers have cut the lead to 10-7. to seven. Certainly good news for the Rangers. 
Yeah, and been very impressed with the start from uh, from Ryland so far. Um, got a, a few quick passes early to build some confidence, and then hitting a deep ball like that to TJ really does nothing but help your confidence even more, and also helps the offense a little bit. Say, okay, here we go. You know, kind of getting that getting that first points on the board, kind of get the offense rolling a little bit. The two safeties which were in coverage of Hunt, uh, Tony Hamilton and Harrison Robinson, they're the two leading tacklers on the team, which. I know when you look at stats, sometimes it's scary when your two safeties are your leading tacklers, but they are so active on this defense, that's why they make so many plays. Yeah, and they're a spill-oriented defense, much like Smithson Valley in the sense that they're trying to spill everything out and not give up big runs in the interior. So when that happens, you know, things are going to get spilled out to those safeties, and they're very active in the run game. Smithson Valley knew that, and so they kind of lulled them to sleep a little bit, and I think that was kind of a crack and go where TJ went to pretend like he was blocking one of those right. safeties and then kind of burst up the field and was able to get behind him. And like we said, big, a big throw by Ryland and, and a big drive by the offense to get some points on the board to kind of stop the momentum that was clearly in College Station's favor. So with the wind at his back, Amaya will kick it off again. Tidsdale, the deep man for the Cougars. This end over end kick will carry into the end zone, hits the end line. Tisdale wanted a piece of it, carried it all the way deep into the end zone, but decided not to field it. And they'll start first and 10 from their own 25 as they did on the opening drive of the game. And we've got a minute 44 left in the first. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see here. Obviously they don't need to go, they're not gonna go away from their ground attack a whole lot because it's been working, but um, would love for the Rangers to be able to get a stop here before the quarter change to maybe get them to be able to punt into the win. Motion. Martinez Brown gets it. This time he's kind of strung out a little bit, then turns up and gets four or five yards out of it before he's wrapped up by the Rangers. I'll tell you what, that was a heck of a four yard run right there. Yeah. Look, looked like there was no room for anything. Rangers did a great job of compression. Good job by Gingrich getting back there, and I thought it was going to be a no-yard game, but he was able to squeeze through for about four. Again, they've got motion across the front. Play action is Maiden wants to throw, has a man out on the edge. That's Verdugo, and he's got another completion for a first down out near the 40-yard line. And I'll tell you what, that was a heck of a throw uh, by the quarterback Maiden there. Had Gavin Woods right in his face. Falling backwards, momentum going backwards, and still able to throw a 14-yard out route. Impressive throw. So first and 10 from the 40. Martinez Brown goes right, gets wrapped up. Weston Ross made the tackle after a gain of a couple. Their shortest run in a while now, just two at second down and eight. Great job by Ross coming in as a safety. Anytime a safety can make a tackle for only a yard or two, you know that he's very active in the run game. It was blocked pretty well up front by College Station. Great job by Ross coming in downhill and making a tackle. Martinez Brown up the middle. Gets spilled again. Interior in line. Dudzikowski Dudz also in on the play. Good job by the defense on that one. Just a gain of one. If I was College Station here, I would be taking my time. And that's exactly what they're doing. An offense that goes fast, I'd be taking my time to where if we do have to punt, let's not punt into this win. I wouldn't be surprised if Smithson Valley does get a stop here and it's not an incomplete pass. They might take a timeout to make them punt into the win. It'll have to be a quick one as the game clock is down under 10. The pass try goes incomplete. The worst thing that could happen for them now is they will have to punt into the wind as it's third and seven. I thought they would just run it if nothing else so they could punt with the wind as the clock runs out. Yeah, I thought they were going to do what they did on their first drive. It was third nine. They handed the ball off and ended up getting a first down. Thought that they might do that again. Worst case scenario, we're punting, but at least we're flipping the field and punting uh, with the wind. Connor Young is the punter as well as the kicker. Gets this one up in the wind. Carries really well. It's a heck of a punt. Fielded by, is that DeHoyas back at the 10? Spins ahead and gets out to the 20. That was a really good punt of almost 40 yards. Yeah, I was... Uh, not expecting that. That was, uh, like I said, the wind's blowing pretty good, especially up top, and he hit it right on the nose, and it was a good spiral end over kick and actually carried the Hoyos back about 10 yards while he wasn't able to get a full head of steam running forward there. And so excellent punt, but, again, great job by the defense. We talked about it earlier after that first drive, them settling in a little bit, getting used to the speed of the game. And so they, uh, they did and came out and got a, a big three and out. Into the first quarter, the Cougars lead the Rangers 10-7 to on the Rangers network.
When the school started out and even our first marching season, it wasn't a competitive season, but our directors made it very clear that they had faith in us and that we had something to show the district. So it was always a possibility for us. I think that this was just the year to make it happen. I've been here since the first year, so I saw how it sounded when there were 30 of us. And now that it's 160, it's ridiculous how much better we are. And it's just really fun to see all the hard work come together over the three years. We started practice on July 26th, and at the beginning of summer band, we do. State corner final action, Rangers go on offense, down 10-7. De Hoyas, the running back, and he gets smacked in the backfield. That is, again, Jaden Bellows, the junior outside linebacker, and that's a loss of a couple. It'll be second down and 12. Yeah, they brought a blitz from the outside, and either we didn't see it or, uh, but, yeah, that was a linebacker right up on the line of scrimmage. He timed it out perfect and was able to get there before our blocker was able to cut him off on the backside uh, for a big tackle for loss there. So the Rangers face second and long. Again, backup quarterback Ryland Walker, the starter today with Sinelec out. De Hoyas in at tailback. Clark and Hunt come out to the near side. Play action, wants to throw it. A back shoulder throw to Hunt is just a little bit wide and goes incomplete. It was a good look, the throw just not right on spot. Pretty good throw, I mean, a designed back shoulder, and you could see the arm strength of Ryland there. Uh, maybe wanted to wait just a hair longer, let TJ get into the corner a little bit more and get his head around. Uh, but that's that's something that you know comes with repetition, and, and those guys haven't had an opportunity to get as much uh, reps with that. But uh, we, we need to connect on one or two of those down the road to be able to create some plays on the outside. Indeed. So second and their third and 12 now. Ball at the 16, 17. Again, play action. We've got a T.J. Hunt in route right at the 25. That should be first down yardage for the Rangers. No, we're five yards short. Oh, you're right. You've got to get to the 29. Pardon yeah. me. Looking at the stick kind of sideways. So the completion is a good one for seven yards. But we're still four yards shy, and the punt unit will come out. Like to be able to catch that on the run. Hoping he catches on the run and is able to go get four or five more yards. Ball was a little high. Had to go up and get it so he wasn't able to, to hit it running. Amaya sends this one bouncing. Did it hit a Ranger? I think yeah. so. So the ball won't go very far. Will be spotted about the 46, 47-yard line. And that's where they will start with good field position. Yeah, that offensive drive really got stymied all on that first play. You know, we talk all the time about Ranger offense needing to stay on schedule, get four, five, six yards on first down, and then getting that tackle for loss, forcing, passing type of situations. Um, you know, kind of got the Ranger offense off schedule. So after a punt, we'll see the defense back out there and hopefully they can make another stop. 28 yards on the punt, no return. College Station, little receiver end around. This is Tidsdale, the athlete. He gets hit and then thrown out of bounds by the Rangers. Yes, a really good corner. I think he's committed to Wisconsin, yes. uh, maybe. And so he does some spot playing, much like a lot of our guys. Uh, plays every snap at, uh, at corner, but then also will come over the offensive side of the ball to be a playmaker. And as you saw there, looked like we had some penetration, was able going to be able to get him in the backfield, but wasn't able to. So second and one, Martinez Brown gets hit in the backfield, falls forward, but I don't think he'll get enough yards for a first down as they spot him at the 44. And a disagreement out on the field right now between a couple of players from opposite teams. There you see the replay. Herring got a piece of him. Spradling got him. Then also in for it. Great penetration there. You got to think, College Station may Maynard. be thinking four down territory here, so it'll be interesting to see what happens if the Rangers are able to get a stop on this down. Third and two from the 45. Martinez Brown blocking on the right. He follows his blocking, and I think he gets a first down into Ranger territory at the 42. It's, we talked about it earlier, D defense making adjustment, Coach Worst and the defensive staff. You could tell, you know, even though College Station just picked up a first down, that was the same type of runs on that first series. There were some big creases in there, and we're doing a better job settling in and, and making some adjustments here defensively. So first and 10 from the Ranger, 42. Maiden wants to throw. He's got a man in the middle and then gets sacked. Great job as the Rangers got in there. Jackson Maynard, who had six tackles and a fumble recovery last week, 
gets his ninth sack of the season. What a play by Jackson. Beats his man up front, able to get penetration right now. Center tried to block back on him, and he got upfield. It's not easy to take down that big quarterback. You know, Maiden, he's 6'3", almost 195 pounds. Not easy to bring him down. Great sack by Maynard. So second and long now, second and 14. Maiden wants to throw and jump in the route. That time was Duffy again. He got one last week. This time got his hands on it. It's incomplete. Brings almost, up third and long. Almost identical to last week in the sense that Ranger coaching staff knew that. They, they call what we call cover two or cat coverage and allowed him to squat and not be worried about getting beat deep because he had to Hoyos over the top. Exact same thing. And I think if the ball was thrown a little bit better, it would have been picked. Um, and so great play, third and long here. Third and 14. They give it to Martinez Brown. He's got a hole. He gets wrapped up and stopped finally. As Gavin Woods had him. Wouldn't let him go. He gets to the 39, but that'll be fourth and about six. It's apparent that that's what College Station wanted to do there. Let's end the ball off. Let's try to get some of it back because they were planning on they're in that you know no man's land, too long for a field goal, too close to punt type of deal. So I think they were thinking four down territory the whole way. And so now we got a big fourth and six, fourth and seven here. See if the Ranger defense can can get a stop and get the Rangers the Ranger offense some pretty decent field position. Looks like fourth and seven. They want to throw. They've got an out route near side. Got a man over the middle, and the Rangers get a hand on it. Great job that time by the Rangers. That's is that Gavin Woods That's clear Gavin back Woods. there. And that turns it over on downs. Great play by Gavin. He's the Mike linebacker. And so not a whole not a whole lot of times do you see a Mike linebacker <laughs> breaking up a play about 15, 20 yards downfield. You see it, the great camera work by our crew down there and you see Gavin dropping and he's able to get underneath a route about 15, 20 yards down the field. Phenomenal play by him and a great job by the Ranger defense of, uh, of making a stop and, and getting the ball back to the Ranger offense with better field position than what they had before they punted last time. 8-11 to go, second quarter. Rangers first and 10 from their 39. For the Rangers, their fourth drive of the game. It's 10-7, College Station on top. This is Lance. He got close to first down yardage on a nice run with a good hole on the left side by the offensive line. Tell you what, they brought a blitz right off the bat and a great job by Corey Coleman, I believe it was. See the replay there. He picked it up right at the point of attack and was able to spring Lance, and the safety did a good job of coming up and making a play, but good, effective. We talked about it last series. What we didn't do on first down was, was you know get on schedule with a six-yard run there. We're right where we want to be offensively. So second and four after the six-yard gain by Lance. That was Tony Hamilton who made the tackle. We'll flip it. This is Bafidis, left side, gets a couple of blockers in front of him, gets stopped, but not until he gets a first down on a good little play design that got good game. Again, we talk about it, it seems like almost every week that we're together, you know, you know the offensive coaches say, okay, what can we do this week to get the ball in Braden's hands? You know, obviously he's not a big guy. He's not your prototypical wide receiver, not your prototypical running back, but he's a playmaker. And so we get, they, they, they try to find little packages each week to where we can get him the ball five, six, seven times because more times than not, he's going to create an explosive play. And that, even though that wasn't explosive in 10, 20-yard chunk, it was, a, it was a good play in the sense we picked up a big first down. So first and 10 from their 49 after back-to-back six-yard runs. This is Lentz. Finds his way through, gets hit by Robinson after about three yards. But he had a seam there, and he got a good gain on first down. Yeah, I thought he was going to get a little bit more than that. Yeah. But, again, great job by the, by the uh, College Station defense, a rally into the ball. Uh, big hit there. Good, good play by number uh, five. I think that's Harrison Robinson as a linebacker. He, he stuck him pretty good. Yeah, the two safeties have made the last two tackles. Maybe we can catch him sleeping on one of those play-action plays. Into the wind now, though. Rangers on the move. They want a blitz. Walker wants to throw it. He throws it up top, far side. And the catch is made. And there's a flag as well. He dropped well, it. He didn't catch it, but there is a flag. And that was one of those where trying to get him to go off sides, and it looked like we got a free play there. And that was, I think that was um, the Ryland's thought was, hey, this is a free play. I'm just going to throw it up because we did have a guy on the neutral zone. They ended up not throwing that flag, but we got the pass interference call anyway. So there was no flag for offsides, but we do get the penalty on the interference, which is 15 yards up to the 31. 
And those are some type of plays that we're going to have to hit as the game goes out. We've talked about those safeties already making big plays in the runs. We're going to be out on islands. Our wide receivers are going to ha- are going to have one-on-one matchups. And uh, in order to create some explosive plays, we're going to need to hit one or two of those uh, as the game goes on. Both Hunt and Clark are far right. Tight ends on the right side. H back on the right side. We'll give it to Lance up the middle. Doesn't get much. Brought down a good job by defensive tackle DeAndre Harwell for stopping him for no gain. Yeah, you can see College Station's mindset is they're going to load the box and they're bringing guys, um, you know, number seven. uh, Their linebacker came off the edge there, um, got underneath our block and had to make Lance slam on the brakes. And then they were able to bring somebody to the outside. So we're going to have to do a better job of cutting those guys off in the the interior. So second and ten from the 31. Penetration again. He wants to throw. He's got Clark near the end zone at the two. He makes the catch. Shoved out of bounds there by safety Hamilton. But it's a first down for the Rangers on a great touch pass against the wind by Ryland Walker. Not only was it a great throw from Ryland, it was a great job of going through his progressions. The tight end was the first option in the flat. College Station covered him up. Then we had a receiver that was on a 10-yard out route. He was covered, too. So not only did he go through his first progression, but his second progression and got all the way to the third. That was not his intentional guy that you look at first. So good job, even though, like we talked about, he's doing a great job of coming in here and managing this offense and did a great job there. First and goal from the two. Here's Doug Lance into the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. Great response by the Rangers. Great response uh, coming out and getting in a 10-0 hole. Uh, great job by the defense settling in and offense making some plays. And uh, and I'll tell you what, I'm impressed with Ryland right now, the way he's handling this moment. Well, great job of blocking on that one as we sealed the near edge. And Lance made extra effort, as he always does, to get into the end zone. Amaya's extra point kick is high into the wind and good. Rangers have taken the lead. It's 14 to 10, Smithson Valley on top. But I want to go back to that pass play. As you said, this wasn't what he wanted to do, and he had pressure as someone blitzed up the middle and got loose that he was running away from as he did all of that work. Yeah, and it was, it was a naked bootleg, one they hit earlier up with Birch. Uh, and you see it here. You see Birch out in the flats, he's covered. You see TJ, he's covered. And so Kyler's really on that type of play, he's meant to be kind of a clear-out guy. He's not even really someone that the coach is like, hey, take a peek down there. On those bootlegs, you go one, two, and then oh, by the time you get to your third option, most of the time it's time to either throw it away or tuck it and run it. So great job by him of having his eyes up and uh, going through his progression and making that throw. And, and the thing that I like most about this team is the first person to congratulate Ryland when he came off the field was Chase Inlet. You know, and so this is a tough uh, position to be in for Chase. You know he wants to be out there so bad, but at the same time the team um, – you know, being a leader of this team, he was the first one out there high-fiving guys as soon as that touchdown drive was and over. And you and I both know Chase is the biggest asset for Ryland, too, because you no know doubt. he's talking to him, telling him what he has seen as the more experienced of the two quarterbacks. No doubt about it. they got a great relationship, and, and both are, are very, very talented quarterbacks. And uh, and it, it just it goes to show you how much of a leader and how uh, – and how big impact uh, Chase can have on this team even when he's not in the ballgame. So against the wind, which again, 15 to 25 miles an hour here in Pflugerville today. The ball blown off the tee, so Amaya's uh, kickoff will have to be, have a holder. Tisdale's deep. Cortan, one of their receivers, is the next level. I expect this ball to go way up in the air against this win. There, a little sideways. He missed it. He's done mm-hmm. this a couple of times this year. He missed it, and it goes out of bounds. And they'll have possession up to the 30, I believe. Yeah, when he really tries to rear back and kick one as he's doing into this win, sometimes it'll roll off the foot and not hit it well. You, you know. Against this win, you probably weren't going to get out of the back of the end zone either, but in that situation, you'd really love the ball to be way up high and your coverage team get down there and able to make a tackle right away. They could make us re-kick after a five-yard penalty. Otherwise, it's just spotted on the 30, I believe. Yeah, I wouldn't make us re-kick, you know. Yeah. Uh, 
you got lucky with him kicking it out of right. bounds right there, and who knows what can happen with this wind. You pop one up in the air, someone can mishandle it. So they're just going to do the same thing and take the ball to the 30-yard line. 5.27 to go, second quarter. Rangers up 14-10. Harrington Maiden and the Cougar offense back on the field. This is Martinez Brown into the secondary. Not brought it down, not brought down until he gets first down yardage. Good job by uh, Lane Richard to come in there and make the tackle. I got gas right up the middle there. Martinez Brown again with some decent blocking, but the defensive line makes a play that time. That Woods. Good job by Gavin Woods to knife in there and make the play from his linebacker spot. I'll tell you what, that was, that was a big tackle right there because if he doesn't make that tackle right there, there's a crease, and he he could be he could have ran for a way. So really good ta- uh, really good play by Gavin getting underneath the the blocker and making that making that play. Direct snap to Martinez Brown as the quarterback Maiden went out in motion. This time he gets three. It's third down and six. Good job by the Rangers recognizing the wildcat, if you will. Yeah, when motion, quarterback motions out of the backfield, he's probably, running back's probably not going to throw it to him. So defense stayed home and, and didn't really pay that much attention and was able to hold him to a minimal game, making third and somewhat long here. Doug Lance comes in for Maynard as they give it to Martinez Brown, straight up the middle, first down Bubble. yard. The ball comes loose. The Rangers have it. It's De Hoyas who picks it up at the 40, and that'll be a turnover for the Rangers to come up with. In the midst of the scrum as is being brought down, the ball snapped out, or... Just shot out, and DeHoyas picked it up. See it on the replay there. I think that last little bit, Woods kind of rips it Woods, out. Yep. Woods and Ross both had the hands on the ball. Much like what happened to us in that first drive. Yes. Defender comes in and rips that thing out. We got payback there a little bit to even up the turnover margin and getting a good job by the defense. And this would be big if the Rangers can go down and get some points here, especially getting the ball coming out in the second half. Good job by their receiver there to come out and make a tackle. So the Rangers at their own 39. The second turnover by them. Walker hands it off. This is Sowersby. The sophomore wiggles his way for four yards up to the 43. Good run by Sowersby there. Looks like uh, College Station got some penetration early on. Good job of him of making a cut, making a few guys miss, and making some positive yards. Again, you don't want to go backwards on your first down and you get off schedule. Good job by him of, of making what he can and actually picking up a pretty good chunk, four or five yards, and keeping the offense on schedule. So the Rangers second and six from their 43. Hunt to the near side, a couple of receivers, a tight end, I think, and Clark on the far side. Walker turns around and says something to Sowersby. Play clock at five, quick pass. Clark with a blocker, doesn't get anything as the defensive back, that time a different defensive back. That is Colton Griswold, a linebacker, actually, that came up and made the play. Yeah, Harrison Robinson at the safety position came up and, and made a play, too. So we lose three. Now we lose one. Pardon me. This would be a big third down uh, conversion right here. Not, not just to maybe keep the drive going and get some points, but also take some time off the clock and not you don't want to give them the ball back with with a right. lot of time with the yeah. wind to maybe go punch one in yeah, as well you don't want to have to punt into this win and the rangers will call a timeout play clock at six so it wasn't in danger 243 left in the quarter the rangers face a third down and seven from their own 42 kind of a strange that was a question i had for you brian <laughs> i had something right there well it, it, it's it's a difficult with the wind as the factor. Third and seven isn't a problem normally. Yeah. Well, I think the main thing, and you saw it with the timeout right here, um, making sure that we get into the right play and making sure because we know how big of a, a play this is, like we, like we talked about earlier. Not only would a first down here continue to drive and give you a chance to, to put some points on the board, but you can take some more time off the clock. Um, in worst case scenario, get a leap further, be able to punt them a little bit deeper so that with the limited amount of time that they would have left, make them go the length of the field. And so this is a very important third down, so that's why the Rangers took a timeout to talk about it and make sure they get the best play call they can. Colton Thomason, the what is he now? He's our left guard. 
An offensive lineman who's been here for a long time and uh, played a lot of football for us going to the Aggies next year. So third and seven, Walker. Low snap, wants to throw it. His receiver got battled up, but he's got Hunt down the field. And that's nothing as it goes incomplete. And we'll have to punt into the wind with 2.37 to go. A yeah, good play by their corner, and there's a reason Wisconsin offered him a, a scholarship. Uh, we tried to, you know, early on we've, we've completed a few of those slant routes in front of him. That time we tried what was called a slow go, a slant and go, and, and he didn't bite on it too much and was in good position there and, and a good play by him. And see if we can get a good punt here and, um, and hold, them out of, hold them out of the end zone before the half so the Rangers can get the ball, uh, go to the half with the lead and, and get the ball coming out. Low snap. Amaya comes up with it. This one's a little more direct. It's low and it gets a roll. And we'll go all the way to the 20 where the Rangers will stop it there. So that punt a little bit better of 37 yards. Yeah, and that's where that style, that rugby style punt that we do really helps us it, against that wind. If you were to kick it way up there, probably not going to get much. Even though it doesn't always look pretty, that end over end tumbling punt. Yeah. You know, we end up getting about a 30, 40 yard net on there and, and making them almost have to go 80 yards. Um, is effective punt into the wind. So from the 21, College Station will start first and 10. Their formation hasn't changed much all day. This time it's a straight pass. He gets some pressure, a little screen. This is the backup running back. That's Zach Dang, a senior at 5'9", 150, run for 287 yards on, well, he hasn't run. That's a reception, 29 receptions, 287 and two touchdowns. Not much of a gain that time as the Rangers sniffed it out. Good play by Noah Herring, the defensive end. You know, the old adage, that, hey, if they're not blocking you, something's up. Right. And so he did a good job of recognizing the screen and falling back and, and making a tackle for no gain. Martinez Brown going left, follows his offensive line and falls forward for a good gain of about five yards up to the 26. Rangers bottled it up, but the offensive line had enough of a surge. Yeah, you'd think here if they run the ball again and we're able to get a stop, you might see Coach Hill take a timeout here to leave himself some time. Um, and the College Station is thinking the same thing. They're usually hurry up tempo, and they're taking their time a little bit, trying to take some time off the clock just in case they don't get this first down. Play clock at 15 as there's motion across the formation. This time he wants to throw to the far side. He's got Verdugo, and he makes a catch, and he's gone. One man can catch him, but I don't think we will. As Verdugo went up high, the defensive back kind of went for the ball, and it was thrown so high, only he could get it. And it's a touchdown pass of 74 yards. Yeah, we, we played cover two and had a safety over the top, and I think DeHoyos wasn't expecting the ball to be thrown that high, and he tried to undercut it. He was thinking interception. He was thinking pick six and uh, undercut it a little bit too much and, and gave up the ball over the top. And so uh, kind of took a gamble there, and it ended up backfiring a little bit. The snap, the hold, the kick are good. College Station goes back on top, 17-14, with 1.09 to go in the first half. So the Rangers will receive the kick, but still be going into the wind with a minute, 69 seconds to go. Kind of a backbreaker there as you think about going to the locker room with a four-point lead. Yeah, still some time. Smith Valley can do something with it with the leg of Amaya. We might be able to, to get into field goal range. But, yeah, that's tough right there. Perfect uh, play call uh, by the defense. Good job by uh, Coach Olbricht uh, with the coverage. Had, uh, that's exactly what you want into in, uh, that cover two into that type of route concept. And that time DeHoyos just tried to uh, take a gamble and, and make a big play that he's done so many times for us. Uh, he tried to – undercut it thinking he was going to get a pick six and uh, the ball just carried a little bit more than what he thought and he ended up overplaying it a little bit and and uh and gave up a big play so yeah that's tough Pafitas and clark go back connor young their kicker will kick off again 69 ticks left on a first half that sees the cougars up 17 14 over the rangers right now and I think this return will play a big part in how aggressive Coach Hill is, is, is in his play calling. I think if we get a good return, you know, maybe past the 40 or something like that, we might be thinking, hey, hurry up from the get-go. If we get put deep, 
then it might be a situation where let's get a this first down. This one will be returnable. It. It's Clark from the six. See if the Rangers can give him some room. There was a seam, but then they closed it quickly. Their ability to defend has been good all day long. And they stop the Rangers back near the 20 yard line where they'll start first and 10. Yeah, now, now I wouldn't be surprised if, um, you know, we kind of run the ball here, just take it to halftime. Not, you know, obviously we got a minute left. Uh, but you don't. What you don't want to do is go out there, throw the ball three times, incomplete, not make them take any timeouts. Have right. to punt into this wind again, and and maybe give them another another chance to score right before the half. And so I think that we're going to have to get a first down in order to see the Rangers go quick here. Lance the tailback behind Ryland Walker. Final minute of the first half. Walker, quick throw to the edge. That's Clark. I think he dropped it. Mm-hmm. Tried to make his move before he had the ball secured, and it's incomplete on first down. Yeah, you could see he yep. tried to stop, and he, yep. he was going to try to break it back outside. Tried to do a little bit too much before he got the ball there. So, again, incomplete stops the clock where um, College Station doesn't have to use one of their timeouts. And so um, it'd, be, it'd be huge if we were able to get a first down here. Lance the tailback, Walker out of the shotgun. Play action again, he wants to throw. He's out loose of the line, throws it to Birch. Almost picked off, but that ball was out of bounds anyway. It's incomplete again. We had Birch open early, but he got flushed a little bit from the pocket. You can see he flushes, and then by the time he, has to, by the time he escapes the rush, um, they were able to recover, but Birch was open early. And again, we talked about it before the drive. This really need to convert here so we don't give them time to be able to maybe go get another score before half. So you've got a third and ten play in your pocket right now. Come on. As the Rangers, with 52 ticks still to left, still left, don't want to have to punt into the wind again. Two receivers near side, one in motion across. That's Bafidis. Breaks one tackle, then gets smothered in the backfield. And they'll call a timeout with 43 seconds to go. <laughs> the ball spotted at the 19, a loss of a couple. Three. It'll be fourth down in time for a Ranger punt with 34 Let's we'll see what the clock should say. It's not 34. We were in the 40s when they called it. Yeah, I think that's what they're discussing now. How much time to put back on the clock? 43 ticks. And the Ranger punting unit will have to go back out on the field. Coach Hill bending the ear of the side judge there during that transaction. There you see... Head coach of College Station. Stoney Pryor in his first year has got him 11 and two into the fourth round of the playoffs. Amaya on. They're setting up for a return it looks like. See if he can keep it low and unreturnable. This one a little higher, end over end kicked, it's bobbled. And they'll have to fall on it at the 48 where they'll start first and 10. Yeah, that was almost a big play right there. He bobbled it initially, kind of caught him in no man's land. Do I catch it? Do I let it bounce once? And he bobbled it. Obviously, we'd love to get, get that football back yeah. there, but that's about as good, a, as good as you can hope for. No return. They put two guys back there that time to ensure that they could get their hands on the ball, and we were still able to get them for no net there. So this is, this is a big moment in the game right here, I think, for the Ranger defense. You know, we need to hold them out of the end zone take it into the locker room with just a three-point three, uh, three point deficit, and we get the ball coming out of the half. So I think this is a hu huge drive uh, for the defense to make a stop here. And that was Camacho down on coverage. The first one almost had a chance to get to that ball. So Maiden out of the shotgun. Martinez-Brown takes the handoff. Got some blocks on the right side. 
Rangers will slow him down and stop him. The clock. Timeout. Will call, uh, they'll call another timeout after the first down run that nets them about five. So with 32 seconds to go, they're at the Ranger 47 on second and five. And again, the defense, you mentioned it. This is as big a series as any right now, just to not let them get any more points. Yeah, and even if you hold them to a field goal here, that would, I mean, that's still not the end of the world. One possession game. Um, but, you know, getting up, taking that lead, being up 14 to 10, and then giving up a big play. And then if they were able to get, you know, two touchdown drives here at the end of the half, that obviously not saying it's an insurmountable thing to come back from, but this would be a big stop here for the Ranger psyche going into the locker room, only down three points. There you see the Cougars, 11-2 and two on the season. They were in a tie for first at 6-1. and one. Last year, a state finalist, 17, five years ago, 2017, they were state champion. Two D1 commits, of course, the running back who's injured going to Duke and that cornerback Tisdale going to Wisconsin. Their enrollment, 2,100, right around that 5A level. So second and five from the Ranger, 47. Play clock begins. Maiden looks to his sideline. In the sack here. He wants to throw. It's a quarterback run. He comes to the near sideline. Gets near first down yardage. We'll see. I don't think he got it. And they're saying he no, did. No, he did. They say he got enough. From across the field, another five-yard gain is a first down, and he goes out of bounds, stopping the clock. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was a design quarterback draw or if the Rangers did a little twist up front and got pressure pretty quick. I don't know if he just tucked it and ran it on his own or if it was designed, but it was effective nonetheless. Five receivers all out. Two near side. Verdugo, now he's got a man in the middle of the field, and he makes the catch at the five-yard line. De Hoyas on coverage. That is the running back, Martinez Brown, and he shook up. Yeah, as we call a little Percy route where the running back, they're in an empty but he was an inside receiver up there and running up the field and hopefully just got the wind knocked out of him a little bit there. Hard hit from De Hoyos, but a great job of hanging on to the catch for him there. And, again, the five-yard line, only 20 seconds left. Martinez Brown still down. You saw the replay. A great way to – a great catch just hanging on to it there. He wasn't the first receiver that uh, Maiden looked at, but he was the one he locked into late enough to make the completion. It looks like he's going to be all right. Probably just got the wind knocked out of him a little bit. 38-yard pass play sets him up first and goal from the five. But he's their main running back, and now he won't be able to come out there, at least on this first play, and carry it. Well, he will now because they just used their last timeout to try to get him back into the game. If they call a timeout, then he can come back in. But kind of interesting there, um, using their last timeout. I think the, yeah. cl the clock was going to roll. Um, you know, the clock stopped on a first down, but the clock was going to roll there. Okay. And they were kind of discombobulated a little bit, who's in it running back and all that. So they decided to use their last timeout here to get him probably back on the field and also to make sure they get the right play call and there's some time's not wasted off the clock. But now that they don't have any timeouts, you know, it's risky to run the ball. So they might be thinking we got to pass it here. But 20 seconds is a lot of time. So Rangers down 17-14. A stop with 20 seconds to go. You figure they can get two plays with the timeout. Now they don't have the timeout. Uh, it would be hard on a six, seven, eight second run to get back up and get in position, especially if the defense lays on the running back for a while and all yeah. that stuff. We, their offense is used to going quick. We've seen the no huddle, so the run is, the run is not out of, out of uh, question here, but um, you would think that they might want to mitigate the risk there and just throw it. But Verdugo we'll and Cashin on the near side, a receiver far side as well. The backup running back is in. This is a quarterback keeper and throws it late. And that's a touchdown catch, I believe, in the corner of the end zone. That's the big sophomore, Xavier Vela, his second touchdown of the season. He was out there just inside of Verduga, and he made the catch. I thought when I saw it live um, that he might have stepped out of bounds before 
his feet were obviously in bounds when he caught the ball, but um, I thought he had been. I thought he maybe he had stepped out and then came back in the field of play and was the first one to touch it. But they're going for two, and they will be stopped by the Rangers. So 23-14, your score. They'll still have to kick off. So the Rangers give up the touchdown they didn't want to going into the locker room. Down by nine at 23-14. Still 14 seconds to go. Yeah, unless we get a huge return here, you know, inside, sure. you know, past midfield and stuff like that to where we think we can get in the field goal range, I would highly doubt that we would do anything besides maybe take a knee or run the ball, get into the halftime. But, um, you know, with our returners back there, it's certainly a possibility if we can break a long run uh, to see if we can maybe get one, one shot at the end zone or a field goal here. So College Station goes up 23-14. A great job of scrambling by Maiden there. Thought maybe he was going to try to run it, but too much defense in front of him. He found his sophomore in the corner of the end zone. And I don't know that we have a replay that could show whether or not he stepped out before that, but the official didn't drop his hat, so we're assuming he didn't, even though he was right on the edge. Connor Young will come out and handle the kickoff chores for the Cougars, who find themselves up nine, as Clark and Bafidis are deep for the Rangers. There's the replay again. Kickoff will go towards the corner and bounce out of bounds. So the Rangers will get it up at the 30. I bet you Coach Hill might make them kick it again. You know how explosive our return game has been. I bet you he's going to make them tee it up and do it again. So they will re-kick. Yeah, our, our best chance of uh, scoring right now with only 14 seconds left is, is a big return here. And so those two guys back there, both of them have returned kicks for touchdowns this year. And so he's thinking, let's give him a shot at it and see if we can get a big return to maybe get something, steal some points right before half here. So from the 35 now, Young will tee it up. The fetus and Clark now find themselves at the 10 and 15 yard line. You know, I've said most of the day the wind is straight out of the north. I don't know that it's not going from left to right, but maybe towards their sideline as well a little bit, kind of across the field somewhat. Kicker's only taking a three-step approach. Yeah, shorter Pink. drop. So he'll just pop it up. It'll be fielded at the 20. Coming this way. Won't get much as Bafidis... On the return, takes up seven ticks, and the Rangers will have the ball near, what, the 26-27 yard line. I see a flag down as well. Is that a flag? I don't see one. Don't right on the 25, is that just a rag? I think that's just a player's towel. Okay. I mean, yeah, I would imagine we would either just hand the ball off here or take a knee, get into halftime, make some adjustments. We get the ball coming out in the second half. and Still a lot of football to go. Seven seconds. Hand off will be the final play of the half. So we'll go into the locker room with College Station, a nine point lead, 23 14. Rangers have some work to do. And we'll be back to give it to you in the second half as the Rangers will receive the second half kickoff here on the Ranger Network. Hello everybody, welcome back to another Discovery Kitchen. My name is Sylvia and I'm a registered dietitian and we've got Chef Mario here. Hey, how's it going? Happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Yes, it's coming up that time of season, so we're gonna have to 
Let's get cooking. Yes. Right? And get this, ready for Thanksgiving. Yeah. So this month's theme for Discovery Kitchen is let's get cooking because of all the things that go on in November, doing a lot of cooking in the kitchen. So Mario wanted to do this recipe for this month. And what are we making? Today, we're going to be making creme brulee. And I want you to know how simple it really is. Yes. And uh, geez, I'm hoping that you will dare to do this because it is so much fun. Yes. Don't be intimidated by it. Don't go and have dinner somewhere and pay a oh, god of money, <laughs> you know, because you can do this for yourself. Yes, it just takes a little bit of patience, a little bit of uh, some time, but uh, the end product is delicious. Yeah. So let's just jump right in. What's our first step, Mario? Well, uh, first step is I'm going to pop this open here. Perfect. So that you can see it is a fresh bottle. I didn't sip on it. So <laughs> not it is, contaminated. It's not contaminated. It's clean. Okay. Water. Clean water. It's a clean bottle. Yes. Okay. And at home, we have to preheat our oven, right? Yes. We better turn that oven on. <laughs> 250. 290. Boop. Perfect. It's on. All right. So then now comes the eggs business. Yes. Okay. So uh, we're going to crack, crack these eggs. Creme brulee. Where'd you learn how to make creme brulee at, Mario? At uh, the San Antonio Food Bank, and I was working with Chef of the Year, uh, Mr. Chef John McGinty. He was one of my students, believe it or not. Oh, and, wow. Full circle. And uh, he decided that he wanted to be a pastry chef. And I go, well, John, you're in a world of mess because I'm not that great of a pastry chef. But, you know, he, he's so good, and he it's just something he loved to do that it turned out that he would turn around and, uh, oh, and by the way, after I do those eggs and I get ready. What's that? This is heavy whipping cream, whipping. three quarter of a cup, according to the recipe. Yes, and we'll show the recipe at the end of the video, so you can snap a shot of that and make it at home. Ooh, and we're gonna get it to boil or simmer? No, just to simmer. Simmer, very important. Three quarter of a cup, because you don't want it to overcook too much. Why don't we want to boil it, Mario? Because then it just burns. It burns, yes. that's right. So what we want to do is we want to take the uh, egg out. We got so a hack. we're going to have a little hack. Sweet. So we're stealing a hack from you, from the YouTube thing. <laughs> so I'm taking the bottle and I squeeze the air out and then it just sucks that egg in. Oh. Oop. Well, <laughs> I think this happened to us the last time, but. Let's see. Okay. okay. Nice. There Good it job. is. See, so we have the, so we have the egg. Yep. Well, yeah, well, put it there. And then we get the second one. Wow. Okay. And then we have that. Nice. So that worked. Nice. <laughs> okay. Didn't break or anything. So I'm going to get rid of that for now. Awesome. We've Thank you. We've been boiling some water. So we're going to turn this off. And this has been cooking, but we're going to add some vanilla. Ooh. Do you a use real vanilla extract? Yeah, vanilla extract. Okay. And I didn't go to Mexico to get it, but it would be nice to get that. I Some think imitation be, vanilla yeah. extract, that's good. Yeah, so now it's, it's, you just wanted to get it to a little simmer. Yes, not boiling. Not boiling or nothing. Very important. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and turn this off. Mm, we're going to put good. our egg yolks back in there. Awesome. And okay. why do we only use the yolk? Uh, then that's what, what the recipe calls for. Hmm. I think it's because it's an egg yolk is the fattier part. It's creamy. Yes. yes. Okay. And so now we're going to add a tablespoon of the pure cane sugar. Sugar, okay. Okay. And now we're going to whip it. Whisk. Whisk it while I add in your, your cream. Okay. You're going to whip while I yolk, while I name it. <laughs> whip. Whip, whip. Well, I need it. You're so hip, Mario. Just a little bit at a time, you know, <laughs> because you don't want it to curdle up on you. Yeah, you might need someone to help you at home. Because yeah. it's hard to do both of these things at the same time. Yeah, so just kind of keep mixing, mixing, mixing. And steadily adding it in there. So find yourself a good partner. Ooh. Very so, delicious. There you go. Let's Está see. bueno. Ooh, this looks good. So we're there. Okay. 
So now. Uh, That's awesome. That's it. You can put it right in here. Okay. All right. So now I've decided that I'm going to, <clears throat> to in order to pour it in here, uh, you want to find yourself a receptacle like this. A receptacle. That has a little bit of a lip <laughs> a spout, on that. Yeah. A spout. Nice. And I'm going to pour that in there to make it easier to pour so that I do not make a mess. Good okay. idea, Mario. So that's at it there. Okay, so now you're going to pour and I'm going to decide that we want to put blueberries. Blueberries. And what other fruits can you put in there you if you don't add, like blueberries? You can add raspberries, blackberries, or, or, or no fruit at all. Is that enough in that one or more? Yes, that's fine. Okay. And so halfway, a little bit more than halfway. Yeah, like that. And give me some of this. And the reason why I use, that's good. And you're going to have one more. Awesome. And you know, as rich as this can is. Can we do this one? Or, nah. or top oh, those off. Oh, top these off. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Ooh. Very good. Perfect. And what's neat about this, and we're done with that. Thank you is you can use just about anything that can go into the oven. And that's what I've done here. So that's why I'm using this one to show you that it can go into a, I'm okay. leaving one There's without. Glass, glass and that's cer uh, cer ceramic. Porcelain. Porcelain. Yes. But it doesn't matter, you know, it's just so that you can turn around and decide what you want to do. Mm. If you want to put some food in it or not. Okay, you can leave them plain, right? Yeah, leave them plain. And then the last thing that needs to happen is of course, oh, the, yes. the water that you've been, uh, Heating up over here. It's important you, cooking it's technique. It's important to add that in there, you know, and you don't wanna you don't wanna get it into the. Be careful. <laughs> into <laughs> your, your uh, water in your creme brulee. No. No good. But you do wanna go about halfway, almost. Halfway. Am okay. I almost there? Almost. A little almost, bit more. A little more. I was gonna ask why do they cook it that way? Because this way it ensures that all of it is gonna get cooked. You know, it's. So as you stick it into the oven, as this goes into the oven, it, it begins to cook all the way, all the way. Yes, I, I think the reason we do water is it helps heat evenly. Even. And so the, the creme brulees don't get burned or don't get heated unevenly. The water helps. It's a medium. Yes. Mm -hmm. So very important. You can't cook it any other way. It has to be done this way. Yes, ideally. Ideally. Yeah. Now, I understand there's a, there's a, you know, they always come up with hacks. Right. You know, and so they, I understand they can do it in a, in a fry cooker now. Oh. Something like that. Well. Air fryer then? Yeah, air fryer. I haven't tried that. I'm old school. <laughs> old school. And this is the way I would do it. Okay. If I was you. So as you can see, it's very simple steps. Yes. So now we got to put it in the oven, right? Now it's got to go in the oven. And then we're going to, uh, Pull it out of the oven after. Yes. It's been in there about, it's going to be in there about maybe 45 minutes or so, but until it no longer is uh, moving. Like, see, this is moving. Till it's firm? Till it's firm. And doesn't move. And this right now is moving, so it's okay. got to go in the oven. So let's cook. put it in the oven and, we're and we'll put bring it in out our finished product. Okay. Here we go. And Ooh. here we go. We also cleaned our space so we you can see our. our space. The and last you can step. See, it's not moving anymore. It's nice and solid. Yes. It's had time to chill. I recommend overnight, but at least one hour. Okay. Good stuff. So then, uh, what's our Sylvia? last step? Two more steps. You gotta okay. put some of this raw cane on uh, coated. This is brown sugar. No, this is raw cane. Raw cane sugar. Okay. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. I'm all trying to put as little as possible, but no, I, señorina. <laughs> I need to be generous. Thank you very much. I like, How many? I like generous people. All of them? People. I like generous people. <laughs> all right. Boom. All right. Boom. So, yeah. All right. Now, now this last step is it? caramelization. Now comes the caramelization. So we have our little toy. Okay. Again, this is, requires adult supervision. <laughs> so anyway. They sell these at... Uh... Awesome. So you're ready to go, Miss Sylvia. And uh, if you maintain staying on top of this, there you go. Just Ooh. keeping your distance. There you go. Da bueno. Starts to cook. Very good. And now you're caramelizing 
the top. Wow. We have two more to go. Very good, Miss Sylvia. You're doing good. Oh, wow. There we go. And now we're just going to shut Turn you off. off. Thank you, and sir. Take this away. That was fun. So you don't turn any fires off. Ooh. It's a little warm, a little caliente. Ooh. Yes, that was really fun. I would make creme brulee just to do that end part. In part? <laughs> I'm going to. Let's, get this. yes. Spoons. Awesome. I want to be spoons. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing this recipe, Mario. This well, is. Yeah, this is a fun thing to do. Really. I know. It really gets into you in the spirit of let's get cooking. There's a lot of things that go on here, a lot of things to measure, whisk, pour. It gives you all the things that cooking, you know, normally entails. And it's so much fun. And you know what? Yeah, it it's tastes fun. so delicious. It really does. It really does. And so what I've done here, some have blueberries, some don't. So if you don't like blueberry, you can replace it with raspberries. Mm -hmm. Dice up some peaches if you want. Mm, yeah. Strawberries. You know, Delicious. you can use any kind of fruit that you want, dried fruits if you wish. Mm -hmm. But oh, the thing yeah. is, it's the holiday season. We're talking November. Yes. And it's time to let's cook cooking. Yes. So try something different, a little, little holiday dessert, you know. Maybe something while you're just visiting with friends and family. Voila. Mm -hmm. Impress a little bit, okay? But that's awesome. Thank you so much, Mario. And we'll catch you guys next time on our next Discovery Kitchen. Yes, from our Discovery Kitchen to your casa. Enjoy! Bye-bye. Bye-bye. When the school started out, and even our first marching season, it wasn't a competitive season, but our directors made it very clear that they had faith in us and that we had something to show the district. So it was always a possibility for us. I think that this was just the year to make it happen. I've been here since the first year, so I saw how it sounded when there were 30 of us. And now that it's 160, it's ridiculous how much better we are. And it's just really fun to see all the hard work come together over the three years. We started practice on July 26th and at the beginning of summer band we do all day rehearsals from 8 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon and as we move into the school year we do afternoon rehearsals um, three days a week and then we have football games on Fridays and contests on Saturdays so it's a very busy schedule but we all really like it and we have a lot of fun. So the name of our show is Full Circle and in movement one it's where the circles aren't entirely complete and throughout the show they get bigger and connect. My favorite part of the show is the first movement. I think that um, it's such a great way to open up the show to the audience and it's, I've been told by audience members it's very like whimsical uh, and theatric which I think is something that we bring that a lot of other shows don't. So that's probably what to me makes this show pretty special. And what really contributed to our success this year was uh, the combination of experience and leadership that we got from our seniors um, and our student leadership team, as well as the new energy and enthusiasm from the huge crop of freshmen that we got, and um, also from the adult leadership, and Mr. Keys and Mr. Ponsetti and everybody, the standards they set and, and the way they encourage us every day. So one thing that really helps me with my nerves through the solo and through the show is all of the repetition that we get in practices and the support that we get from parents and our whole band family. Uh, one big part of the season for us that's been really, really important for our competitive success is all the parent involvement. We, in our show, have over 25 props that we use that build into the theme of Full Circle. And just the students by themselves, we can't get all those on and off the field inside the UIL time limits. So we really need that help. And so I'm really grateful of them for helping us out. I really always focus on the things we can control. And I can't control what the judges do, but I'm gonna make sure that my students have the best performance. Um, I want them to feel like a million bucks when they get off that field. And so competitively, um, I'd be lying if I didn't say I had my eyes on finals. <laughs> There's 23 bands and the top 10 make finals and I'm gonna give it my best shot with our students. Um, but at the end of the day, if we have a great performance and we fall a little short of that extra goal, we'll be okay. 
we just have a tradition of always supporting one another and being there for each other like before the show and after the show if people want to talk about like mistakes they made but we all know that we all work really hard and that's worth more than any trophy. For the robotics competition, there was a lot of, first of all, getting the robot ready, because we can't go unless we actually have something to compete with. At first, we sketch all our ideas out, and we go around the room and look at everybody's ideas. And out of those, we select a few that we want, and we start to prototype those. So we're given a kit of consumables and non-consumables that we're allowed to use to build the robot, and we can't use anything that's not inside that list. I did programming for a little bit and we used Natural Language 2.0 and we used Robot C to program our robot. So I built the practice field so that we could run ideas for how we could get more points. So I was a driver for a robotics team and when I was driving the robot, I, felt, I, I was excited but I was also nervous at the same time because I didn't want to mess up. I didn't want to be the one who caused our team to lose. But afterwards, I, I was proud of myself. I did not work on the robot this year. I worked on the process engineering notebook. The process engineering notebook is worth 30 out of 100 points in our total points. And basically, we put everything in there that we do throughout. So we have a safety section, we put all of our designs in there, and our codes, stuff like that. So going into uh, San Antonio Best with the robot that we had finished the day prior to going, um, it was nerve-wracking to say the least. But after we got past the first round, and then the second round and the third round, we started making friends with other schools. We started cheering on other campuses. It was a very chaotic, but a lot of fun. I feel like I learned a lot more about engineering and like ingenuity, coming up with different strategies, trial and error, um, and just working as a team all together. We learned so much about this competition that when we get to state, we know what we need to do and we know what we need to bring to be prepared for. everybody, welcome back to another Discovery Kitchen. My name is Sylvia and I'm a registered dietitian and we've got Chef Mario. Hey, how's it going? It's Halloween time. It's spooky, spooky season. Days. So we're gonna go seat to table and we have brought our little friend with us. Yes, you know? he's and awesome. Chef Mario carved him himself. I'm mm -hmm. impressed. Oh, look at that. <laughs> so, and there's a couple of things I can do, ma'am. Right. Whoa, put the knife down. Well, then put the knife down. <laughs> I'm not going to get violent, but I did want to say that. It yes. looks good. It Thank looks you very good. much. I appreciate that. But uh, what is our theme this month, Mario? Well, it's seat to table. Yes, today, seat you know? to table. So these are all things that you can grow in, in your, your garden, garden from a seed. You can get them from a farmer's market. Farmer's market. If you yeah. don't want to grow them yourself, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah. hard to grow stuff. <laughs> well, yeah, you can go to the farmer's market. You can go to the market itself, period. Yes. You can go to the food bank. And yeah, they, they do. Have, and they happen to have vegetables too, should you mm -hmm. be in that, in that position. Get it. Get it. So, awesome. We're making sauteed vegetables. Sauteed vegetables. And what else? And while I'm at it, I'm going to turn around and show you that you could. Uh, I've, I'm, I've got some egg whites here. So, I want nice. to show, I want to show you a little frittata. So, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of olive oil okay. here. Okay. So we got a bonus. We're gonna make some stir-fried stir vegetables and a frittata. All at the same time. All at the same time. How about that? Because they both go together. Woo! -hoo. So we're gonna add our egg whites down here. Awesome. Is your fire on? No, we're going to. Oh, we're gonna light it up right we're now. We're gonna light it up in just a second. Then. We're gonna be patient. I will be patient. <laughs> so we fire. got that. Good. We got fire going. Awesome. Egg whites are the part of the egg that has most of the protein. It has a lot of the nutrients as well, but egg whites are full of protein. The yolk is the part that has mostly fat. Yes, and uh, we're gonna add some... Um, 
What are those? These are cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes. If you happen to have some heirloom tomatoes, those are equally great. Equally delicious. Just cut them in half. Yes. Those Add are them in there. Awesome. Boom. Into our egg whites. Into into the egg whites. Okay. Okay. And we happen to have some spinach. Ooh, spinach. It is so nutritious. Has so many vitamins and minerals. And it's in these leaf. Just and a leaf. It's a leafy. Yeah, my my. Uh, my grandchildren say, we, can we have some leaves? They don't call them spinach. They, <laughs> they don't call them spinach? They, they call them leaves? Leaves. They don't want to have leaves. Yes. Okay. Really? So. It's so nutritious and dense with vitamins and minerals. And it's just a leaf. And it has all those amazing things in there. And it's going to cook down, you know. Yes. So. Spinach wilts like really crazy. So you see that amount? It's going to look like this small after he cooks so it. The next thing I'm going to add is red onion. Okay. Ooh, why red and not white? Do you just like the color? I think it's more color, and I think we've spoken about the color in your diet. Yes. And how important that is. Yes, adding colors. So I'm going to add that in there. Ooh. And I'm going to add just one cut. Onion. Oh. Does oh. it make you cry when you cut onions, Mario? But they say the jealous ones don't cry. So oh. <laughs> so then we're going to add some mushrooms. Okay, okay. onion goes back. Mushrooms. I love mushrooms. It's a fungi. It's a fun guy, and you know I've I've noticed I added the the uh, stem on this one. Uh huh. You don't have to because you could turn around and just take out the stems. Pop okay. it out, eh? No Reduce food out. waste, and you can use it. Would there be you better. go. But either way, as long as you eat so your we're vegetables. Adding some mushrooms in there. Delicious. They have a. Um, there's special mushrooms that they're grown under UV light, and if they're grown under UV light, they have really high amounts of vitamin D in them which is really cool. A lot of Americans don't get enough vitamin D in the diet, so Next you can get them in one. your mushrooms. Sorry. Awesome. Get your whisk, Mario. Yes. Whisking yes. up uh, the egg skillet that we have with the tomatoes and the spinach and the mushroom. And it's cooking on low. We're just gonna let it Let sit. it simmer. Yeah, we're not gonna add any more to that. Okay. But you could. Okay. And uh, we've I've shown you how to cut, and this is one of they call one. What of is these, that? This is a a, a fire, a fire uh, bell pepper. A fire bell pepper. It's like fire, you know. That's like a combination of the red and the yellow, and yes. almost orange, because you know those primary colors make orange. Yes. So wow. Isn't that neat? And I've talked about bell peppers before. They're really high in vitamin C, which is really good for our immune health. Helps us fight off bad germs, especially during the season, right? We've mm. got viruses going around, flu, COVID. So make sure to eat your colorful vegetables, especially yellow, orange, and red. So we're just going to add a couple of these. Or is that squash? This is the yellow squash. Squash. And um, I have I have scored it because I like to play with my yes. food. Yes, he makes them nice and designed here. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we've got that going. Perfect. Zucchinis. And I'm going to get some asparagus. Uh, asparagus. Okay. Now, Delicious. the neat thing about the asparagus, and I love these spears, so I may just turn around and what the heck, you know? <laughs> I'm going to add these spears. I like the, the tops of them. They become the most so tender. Oh. Okay. And, and, the, and the tops, and asparagus are very wiry. They're kind of tough. You have to cook them. Uh, for a good amount of time for them to get soft. It's because they have a lot of fibers in them, which means um, they're really good for your digestive health. health. Right? Yes. And we're gonna go for some broccoli. Ooh. Look at all these colorful vegetables. I love it. Broccoli, broccoli, broccoli. Do you like broccoli, Mario? I love broccoli, you know, and today we served broccoli and cheese in the, on the line. Yes, we did. For the kiddos. And I noticed that they really, really enjoyed that. But I noticed that if you take your broccoli and you break it into little trees, as they uh -huh. say, the children will tend to eat more. Yes. If you give it to them in big one, yeah. they tend to not eat that and they just toss it around on the plate. Food, uh, the f size of your food impacts the texture of your food. So if it's in smaller pieces, your uh, kids are more, more likely to eat them because they're not so big. I oh, like my certainly. vegetables cut up still, and I'm an adult, so. 
and yellow. Awesome. And we're going to add some more olive oil here to keep this moist and going. Olive oil, right? Olive oil. And I'm the last, last one that I'm going to add is some of this orange. I orange like the color. Orange pepper, yes. I really do like those colors. Awesome. How long are you going to stir fry this for? And again, you don't want to kill this. So you want to go maybe about no more than four minutes on this. Four minutes, okay. Yeah, but you want to keep them crisp? To, two to three is good. You just want to flash saute. And over here, How's we're the doing frittata pretty good. Doing? The frittata is doing really, really good. So we're doing good over here. Awesome. Good in the hood. So we're going to leave it alone. <laughs> and believe it or not, it's about done. Yes. So like I said, you can just turn it in there and kind of forget about it. As you can see, <laughs> here we are. Oh, there's seasonings. Can't forget the seasonings. No, garlic, salt, and pepper, guys. Make it, keep it simple. Yes. Don't confuse yourself. <laughs> Garlic, salt, and pepper. Garlic, salt, and pepper. I'm using olive oil, but you could use easily canela oil. It's fine. Pinches at a time is good. You can always add more. Tough to take out, huh? Yes. <laughs> so, I really like this month's theme because it stresses the importance of eating fresh fruits and vegetables and produce. Sometimes yes. I feel like we don't focus on that enough. No. But Really focusing on things you get from a garden, outside, local farms, local uh, vendors, and kind of uh, making sure you eat those on a daily basis. Very important for your health. I always talk about the vitamins and minerals that we have in our vegetables. We don't get enough, so it's important to eat them. Thank you, Maru. Okay. So if you'll take and just spoon it into yes, the sir, plates, that. we'll have it ready to go. Are you putting the frittata on the same plate? We're gonna do the frittata and the, maybe the last in the back, the ones in the back. Okay. No, go ahead. All Keep the way. This all the way. That way we have any tasters. Somebody's gonna walk up and wanna taste. But as you can see, it's already she's assembling her plate. Gives you the opportunity to then make your presentation. Ooh. And spoon and serve uh, your, More? your yeah, the colors. Don't leave the colors behind there. <laughs> You're right. Get some in. Okay. My dietitian over here for getting the colors. <laughs> All right. So anyway, so here we have our uh, stir fried veggies. Stir fried veggies. Delicious. It's a very simple, quick, and Easy. ready to go yes. stir fry. And yes, it's gluten free. So anyway. <laughs> yes, it's free from almost all allergens. This is good for a vegetarian. Yes, or vegan too. Or vegan because it doesn't have any butter. It has no animal no product. No animal product whatsoever. Yes. So there you go. So you may have some particular friends. I'm just kidding. Then if you want to fight them over. Yeah, we got to make sure everybody can eat. They're inclusive. We're being inclusive. Yes. How about that? Always, always. So uh, thank you for watching this Discovery Kitchen. We'll share the recipe. And welcome back to Pflugerville as the Rangers will receive the second half kickoff. Down 23-14 and got some work to do, but uh, isn't that the Ranger way? Yeah, no doubt. We're uh, going to have to overcome some adversity, obviously, on a series of unfortunate events there. We're going to have to close out the half, giving up two touchdowns in less than a minute, and uh, not the way you want to close out a half. But, uh, you know, we get the ball coming out, hopefully put a drive together, get some points on the board, make it a one-possession game. Uh, and get right back into this thing, and we'll, we'll see what kind of adjustments the Rangers made on both sides of the ball uh, in the locker room. Pafitas and Clark are deep. Connor Young, the kicker for College Station. The end over end kick is not deep. Pafitas at the four. Far sideline angled, has a seam. Gets out to about the 30 this time, the best return yet for the Rangers, other than the one that was farther than that in the first half, I should say. Yeah, good return, get up to the 30. Looks like they got a player down. He's grabbing his leg. Hopefully it's nothing serious. I think that might be their, I don't want to guess, but I think that might be their starting linebacker. Number seven, Col Colton Griswold. Hopefully he's all right. We've seen him make some plays on. We have. 
on the defensive side in the first half. Hopefully he's okay. Still on his uh, stomach. They rolled him over. Looks like they're working on. Uh, in this weather, I don't think it's a cramp. So yeah, hopefully it's nothing serious. Like they were working on his left leg, but we'll just speculate at that and know that the Ranger offense. I know they're in that huddle right now coming up with some good plays to come out here and move the ball down the field. Yeah, and going against the wind here in the third quarter. Um, so I think the main goal of the third quarter here is put some drives together, take some time off the clock. Obviously scoring some points would, would be a bonus, but I think that if we can get this thing into the fourth quarter as a one-possession game and now we've got the wind at our back in the fourth quarter, I think that bode well for the Rangers. So we just need to – Make sure that we have an effective third quarter. Make sure we don't give many freebies and take care of the football and see if we can get this into the fourth with the wind at our back within a one-possession game so we can win it down the stretch. That is Colton Griswold, one of their senior linebackers. Pretty much walked off the field on his own, even though he had arms around people, but it, it wasn't a leg issue, I don't think, because he wasn't uh, favoring either one. Anyway, Rylan Walker back out at quarterback for the Rangers. Two receivers to the near side. They'll throw it to Befetus. A little screen out this way. Has one man and still gets about four yards. Tell you what, that was impressive closing speed by their safety number four, Tony Hamilton. Looked like Befetus. He's a tough guy to tackle in space. Right. And that was the, the good job of the other two guys blocking out there. And the, the one guy left made a, uh, made a tackle coming down from the safety spot. Only a three-yard gain where it looked like he had a lot of room out there. So impressive tackle by, by number four there, Tony Hamilton. Two receivers to the far side on second and six for Ryland Walker. Lance behind him, takes the hand off. It's maybe a yard to the 40. Then a late hit comes in. Be nice to see them flag some of that stuff. As Collins Station's doing a good job defensively of playing underneath our blocks. You see there. Defensive end comes under Birch, making Lance bounce it to the outside, and they've got where they've got a host of, uh, of guys waiting for him there. And so, you know, obviously we got a lot of time left in this ball game, but it feel, this feels like a big third down right here. It does indeed. Linebacker jumped, and there's a pick. That's Bellows. Brought down at the 20, and a turnover on the Rangers' first possession. Jaden Bellows with his first interception of the season. I don't know if that was a miscommunication or not, but it wasn't really a Ranger around there. I don't know whether it was a bad route or miscommunication somehow, but I'm right into the arms of, uh, of the defender there. and Not how you want to start out the half. You get the ball coming out and you want to, you're trying to get some points at the very least, flip the field, and definitely don't want to give this offense a short field. So, so the Cougars... Give it to Martinez Bellows. He was stopped initially and then kind of slid off that pile and got back to the line of scrimmage. You know, defense to do what they did in the first half after that first turnover we have and stiffen up in the red zone and try to limit this to a field goal opportunity. Still keep it a two possession game if we can do that. Martinez Brown goes on a little misdirection. Gets five yards. It's actually third down and four. Yeah, it's a big play right here. If we can hold him, to, hold him to a field goal try, that would be a win for the Ranger defense after a turnover. Two backs in the backfield. They give it to the other back, which is Ding. He didn't get a first down. Zach Dang. They spot him up at the 18. It'll be fourth down and about two, and I believe the field goal unit's coming in. Huge stop by the Ranger defense right there. Huge stop. Last thing you want to do is come out and turn the ball over and then give up a touchdown to make it a three-score game. And so even if they make this, it's still a two-possession ball game, and hopefully we can block the thing here. Young in for the extra point. The snap a little bit high. The hold is good, and the kick goes between the uprights. So they're up on the board first, 26 to 14 now, a 12-point advantage. 
Smithson Valley will receive the kickoff when we come, well, after the exchange happens. We're three minutes into the second half. And they scored on a turnover. Yeah, and that's something that the Rangers have done a good job of all year. Uh, I think coming into the game, we're plus 24 in the turnover category. Uh, defense has done a phenomenal job of taking the ball away, and we've done a great job on offense of not giving the ball away. And, uh, you know, this ball game, we're so far we're in, the, we're in the negatives. I think they've turned it over once, and we've turned it over twice now. And so uh, when you're playing in December against really good teams, you got to take care of the football and create turnovers. And uh, losing that turnover margin is, has been uh, one of the differences in the ball game so far. You saw Ryland Walker warming up on the sidelines. Now you look at some of our assistant coaches on the sidelines. And now Connor Young will tee it up and will be ready to kick off again. The Rangers three minutes into the third quarter, bowed up, and uh, after turning it over in the red zone, held them to a field goal, which is certainly good news. Now we need to get the ball back and march down the field. Yeah, and it all again, we, most of the Rangers' successful offensive series this whole year has come off of good field position, whether it be special teams or a defensive turnover, and so – doesn't look like this one will be returned, but need to get some of those plays again and kind of get the momentum back on our side. So the ball down in the end zone by Kyler Clark. They'll bring it out to the 25 where the Rangers will start first and 10. So we talked about it before we went on the air. We've got to be able to run the ball. That, that has yeah. to be something we can do to have success. Yeah, and especially we've got to be able to run the ball on first down to where we can, you know, stay in on schedule. You know, this offense isn't necessarily built for the third and tens, third and twelves. We need to be able to throw the ball when we want to as opposed to when we have to. So we got to be able to run the ball effectively here in the second half. Play action, fake to Lance. He wants to throw it. Ryland Walker does. Really nothing there. So he tucks it down and fumbles the ball. And I think they – Oh, we got it back. We got a fight. We got a fight, and I think we got it back. That was Coleman. Corey Coleman who ended up with the ball and about a five-yard gain. Yeah, that's that's one of those scenarios there where, you know, Ryland coming off of a turnover, wants to make a play, you know, trying to extend a play. Might have been one of those situations there where it's best to just live to fight another day, throw that ball away. Uh, at the very least, if you do decide to tuck it down and run it, make sure that you secure that thing. And we were very fortunate to not only get the ball back there, but, you know, pick up some yards on the play, actually. Yeah, they're – they had a chance at it. it. Looks like they jumped on it early, and then it's kind of squirted yeah. out of there. Looks and like uh, one of their players, number 11 linebacker, yeah. Shane Bellows, is coming off the field he gingerly. Came off, he came off the field earlier with a bum shoulder, I thought, and this I looks think, like to be yeah. similar. Yeah, he's. you can see he's got that brace on it, so it's not the first time that he's had shoulder issues, so hopefully he's okay. But, you know, got a different linebacker coming in there now. Second he, down and five from the 30. 41's in for him. Anthony Medrano. Walker with Lance behind him. Out of the shotgun. We'll give it to Doug going right. Gets outside a little bit, then pursuit catches up. Good job by Robinson to come over. Stop the game to just a couple of yards, maybe three. It'll be third down and two. Looks like initially he had some space on the edge, but again, great closing speed by the College Station's defense there to keep it to a minimum gain. You see on the replay there, I don't know if, uh, if it was highlight or not, but you, Colton Thompson taking his guy for a ride and getting a pancake about <laughs> 10 yards downfield. But again, another big third down here. Third and two from the 28, or pardon me, the 33. Got to get to the 35. Doug avoids a tackler and falls forward. Gets the first down like he usually does on a nifty run. Doug Lance, the junior tailback. Again, big play there. Obviously, you don't want to go three and out again after a turnover on the last one. But now you're getting closer to midfield, and even if we don't end up getting any points out of this drive, you're getting better to where we can flip the field, taking some time off the clock, just trying to buy some time, maybe get it to a one-possession game by the time we get the wind again in the fourth quarter. So first and ten from the 42. Fake it to Lance. This is an end around. Bafidis has a couple of blockers. And stays on his feet. Gets almost to midfield at the 46 or 47. Would be close to a first down. Probably give it to him. 
And again, I, I'm, yes, just, I'm, I'm very impressed with the, the team speed of College Station. We've seen that the Rangers run that play multiple times a game throughout the year. And most of the time when Bafidis gets that type of blocking on the edge, it's an explosive play, if not a touchdown. That time we had a hat for a hat, but the backside safety was able to run him down. Even though we got a big game, 10 yeah. yards, uh, typically those go for a lot longer. But uh, the team speed at College Station is really impressive on the defensive side of the ball. As we've seen Chase do it all year long, Ryland comes over to talk to Coach Hill real quick. Back to the huddle. Play clock at five. We need to snap it, and we do. This is Lance coming left. Cuts back right. Breaks one tackle or carries a tackler with him for a nice gain across midfield. Some piler honors. Good tough run there. Good cut. Stretch play. You know, you're looking for that one cut and get downhill, and he did a good job there. And, and uh, got to make sure we hang on to that football. College Station's doing a good job yep. when they're wrapping up, trying to rip that thing out. So, But, again, we talked about it before, right when we came on air. Got to be able to run the football. We're seeing us run it a little bit here, and that was, a, that was exactly what you want on first down. Five- to six-yard gain, staying on schedule. Now if we want to throw it, we can. Uh, but um, – yeah, but six, a good first down gain right there. Six yard gain on first down, second and four. Lance again up the middle, nothing there. Everybody from the defense comes in and gets a piece of it. Give him a gain of about, we're going to say nothing. So the can, seventh play, sixth play of the drive is a no gain run. Again, that's a good job by their defense there. Again, they're coming underneath and spilling everything out um, to number nine, their outside linebacker, who we don't have a hat for. Typically those plays are designed to go up the middle, and so you're not even really planning on blocking an outside linebacker, but they're spilling everything out to him. So we might have to add a tight end or something over there, which we do this time to make sure that uh, we get a hat on him. Two wide outs to the far side. Walker in the backfield. Give it to Lance, but they get a hit on him. That's Madrano, the backup linebacker, got the first hit. Falls forward, but not enough. Still, it's fourth and three. Fourth down three. Looks like the Ranger offense is going to go for it. Might try to go on two or, you know, do, use a dummy snap count or something to get a free five. But, uh, you know, obviously it's a big play in the ball game. We don't get it here. Give them a short field. And um, obviously Coach Hill feels like, hey, we need to do something here. and We need to, we need to get momentum back on our side. So we're deciding to go for it. Play clock at 10. It's Lance coming this way. Has to beat a man. Falls forward. Breaks a tackle. Still going past the 40. A good first down run for the junior tailback who used extra effort that time to do it for the Rangers. Yeah, that run was sheer will right there. Um, had it blocked good initially on the edge, but then there was one guy outside. You see number nine and five there. And uh, they actually made first contact. He would have been short, but he did a great job of lowering his shoulder, shaking off a tackle, and getting a huge first down there. He's going to get a breather. Now we've got DeHoyos uh, in that running back. So first and 10 from their 39. On a nice run by Doug Lance. Walker to throw. Has pressure up the middle. Oh, now boy. is going to get sacked. Probably should have got rid of it when he had a chance. Wasn't able to. They'll lose yardage all the way back to the 47. Yeah, they try to what we call hitch and go. A lot of times, so often throughout the year, we pumped that uh, or we, we fired that ball out there on a little quick hitch route. And that time they did a hitch and go. We got pressure early. Ryland had to had to scramble away and probably again uh, hasn't a little bit of inexperience sure. showing there. You know, don't make a bad play worse. Throw the ball away. Right. Second and 10 is much better than second and 18, um, especially it got a little momentum after a big uh, fourth down conversion there inside the opponent's territory. You know, live to fight another day. So now we're behind the chains. Two receivers both near. We give it to DeHoyas. Has a seam. Had some good blocking there. Makes contact. Gets a bunch of it back. A gain of 12. Yeah, he's definitely got a burst. You know, when he when he's fresh enough, obviously playing every snap of safety. When he's fresh enough to come in there at running back, he has a little bit different of a gear. And that was a big play right there to get a lot of it back to make it third manageable. And Coach Hill's already shown that it we're, pro we're in uh, four down territory yeah. here. And so uh, you think you got two plays to get six yards here. And so I wouldn't be surprised to see another handoff to DeHoyos uh, to make it fourth and manageable. So same formation as before, a couple of tight ends. Now Bafidis in motion. We give it to Hoyas. Their defensive line doesn't go anywhere, though. Corbin Johnson, the nose tackle, 
had the biggest part of that one as we lose a yard. Now it's fourth and seven. Again, that's College Station's defensive line getting flat down the line of scrimmage, not getting us, not able, O lineman not able to get an edge set and just kind of stringing everything out. Um, but again, even here, this has been a, a good drive for the Smith for the Smithson Valley offense, getting some first downs, wasting most of this third quarter, so that um, obviously we'd love a conversion here, but uh, you know, trying, Twelve. trying to buy time to get to the wind. Twelfth play of the drive. Got two minutes and change left in the quarter. Walker to throw. Has an in route and misses Clark. Kyler had some leverage to get yep. inside and he just didn't connect. And that's an incompletion and we turn it over on downs. Yeah, had Kyler on a slant route. Had a step or two. Really good route by him. Ball's just a little bit out in front off the fingertips and Again, need the defense to, to make another good stand here, and that way we can get the, the ball in the wind going into the fourth quarter uh, if we can get a stop here. One of those games where the defense might have to come up with some point-producing type plays. This is Martinez. Great play by the defense Martinez there. Martinez Brown, who got strung out for the first time. It's the first time we've really kind of strung him out and brought him down. Yeah, we got somebody free. I don't know if it was Maynard or – who it was early. I think it was Maynard. He busted in early to make him bubble, and then we had time to rally the troops there. Now he's loose on the left side. Gets stuck about the 41, so a gain of five brings up third and five. Good job by the defense of pursuing that one. That was DeHoyas who came in and hit him. Yeah, good open field tackle there. Obviously, they got a little bit of it, but still bringing up a third and somewhat long here, third and five, and again, it'd be... Big stop here by the defense if we can hold them to a punt after that fourth down failed conversion. So third and five after the five yard run. Kevin Wood shouting some stuff out to his teammates. Back goes in motion. Now they throw it a little hitch route to Dang. He Short. catches it, but he's not gonna get a first down. Stopped at the 44. By a couple of Rangers. Good play defensively as we sniffed it out and found him. Gavin Woods is there, first contact. Spradling also came in. So it's fourth down and two from the 44. They do bring their punter in. It's a big stop. Big with, stop by the Rangers. With the D. wind. Clock under 35. So we'll have one play into the wind if we run the ball. Nice spiraling punt. Fielded by Bafitas at the five. Got some room to make up. Gets a couple of yards and finally up past the 15. That was a great punt. Yep. I knew he was going to boom it whenever he punted about a 40-yarder in the first half against the wind. I knew that he'd boot it pretty good uh, with it. So the Rangers, I expect the Rangers here to uh, run the ball one time, get it to the fourth quarter. And uh, that way, you know, we, that was a fast third quarter. Just yeah, what the – Kind of what the Rangers wanted, just yep. try to hang on there. Don't let the lead get too busy. Now we flip the field, get the wind at our back, and hopefully get some stops and make them punt into the wind and field advantage game. Looks like Sowers bees in the backfield with Ryland Walker. Walker wants to throw, has a man in the middle. It's T.J. Hunt, and he makes the catch. When you expect them to run out the quarter, they throw it against the wind, and T.J. makes a nice catch of 30 yards out to the 44. Yeah, I think College Station was probably thinking the same thing I was. Uh, probably going to run out the clock here, and I would expect uh, Smithson Valley to, even though the clock stopped on the first down chains here, the clock's going to get live again here in a second, and they're going to let the quarter run out if the White Hat would ever actually start the clock like he's supposed to. Still. Why isn't the clock running? There we go. Oh, hmm. finally does. Thankfully, the play clock is still more seconds on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure the Ranger coaches were kind of wondering why the clock wasn't rolling, and That'll be the end of the third quarter. So one timeout. We'll come back the Rangers' fourth quarter with the win at their back on the Ranger Network. For the robotics competition, there was a lot of, first of all, getting the robot ready, because we can't go unless we actually have something to compete with. 
At first, we sketch all our ideas out and we go around the room and look at everybody's ideas. And out of those, we select a few that we want and we start to prototype those. So we're given a kit of consumables and non-consumables that we're allowed to use to build the robot and we can't use anything that's not inside that list. I did Back in Pflugerville as the Rangers have a first and 10 from their own 43 after the quarter change. Still down 26. Here's a reverse and a pass. It's Clark to TJ. Little too high. Oh my, that was a good looking play. They did have double coverage on TJ, but a better throw would have been catchable for sure. Yeah, really good ball by Clark there. That was kind of a reverse pass, thinking TJ was going to slip behind everybody. Good job of the, of the College Station defense staying home. Uh, and really good ball there by, uh, by Clark. A little bit over the top there, but obviously the Rangers going for a home run ball there early on to try to break, uh, get into this lead a little bit early in the, in the fourth quarter. Again, their secondary has been everything and all that. Little high snap, Sowers B. They're off the defensive line, still home. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. That'll be third and 10. And we're having a hard time handling their deep front. Getting flat down the line of scrimmage right there. You see a big number, 94, yeah, Corbin Johnson. He's been, yeah. he's been wreaking havoc all day, and he's a big old boy up there. So the times that we've been able to get the edge, you know, we've had success running the ball. But this is what we want to try to avoid right here, third and long, you know, pa obvious passing type situation. So Clark fakes the handoff to Sowersby. Looking to the sideline, and a good pass Late. breakup by Anthony Tisdale Jr. brings up fourth down. Yeah, good play by him. That ball's just a little bit late. Yeah. Um, you know, on a deep out route like that, the ball's going to be in the air a long time, and you're kind of taught. It was a really good throw. It was just a little bit late. You're kind of taught as the quarterback when the receiver starts dropping his hips, then that's when the ball goes. And if he's looking at you and you haven't thrown it yet, then you're a little bit late with it. I think that one was just a little bit late. Uh, he had separation early, but had time for that good corner to be able to come in and, and make a play on it. Maynard tries to keep this one in play. Gets a good short kick, and it'll go out of bounds about the 18-yard line. So good kick inside the 20. Pretty good kick by Amaya there. But again, now we got the fourth quarter. So um, would love to be able to get a stop here, a, a quick stop, and make them punt into that wind. Obviously, the, the punter we've seen for them, it's got a big leg, and so, but still going against the wind. If we're able to get a quick three and out here, we should get good field position. So we've held them when they got the ball deep and limited them to field goal, and that's three and out last time. The Rangers need it again as they go into the wind for the first time in the second half. Martinez Brown follows his blockers, but not much there. Ranger defense did a much better job that time. That was uh, linebacker, uh, Richard, who got there first. There you see the great hit by Richard. So second and eight after the two-yard run. Good play. Good play by the defense again. I think that's McLean Garrett coming from the backside DN spot, and again, they're running that play and making one cut, and early on that, that's been there for him. And uh, I think McLean doesn't get a shoestring tackle there. He's, he still may be running. So, again, big third down here. If we're able to get a stop right here, make him punt into the wind, Ranger offense gets a short field, and you're kind of doing exactly what you hope to do when you got the wind. So third and about five. Is that a direct snap? Direct snap. Looks like we got him short. Looks like we've held him a yard or two to go. Ball spotted at the 32. It's fourth down and one. All right. Defense did their job, creating a three and out. See if we can get good field position. If we're able to catch this ball in the air, we should be able to at least get it to about midfield or better, and that's the best. that would be the best start in field position we've had all day. We have procedure, I think. That could back him up start. five yards. So that will back him up 
to the 23, so instead of fourth and one, it's fourth and six, but it doesn't matter, they're putting anyway. But five yards closer for the Rangers to field it. Young's kick. This one not as good as his first one. Won't get to midfield, Barry, and Bafidis calls for a fair catch at the 47. I bet you he's going to be kicking himself. Yeah, I, I won't argue with that. Usually he's, he's the last one to fair catch it. And, but, uh, again, the best field position Smith Valley's had all day is about the 47-yard line. I think if we were able to get that caught and not fair catch, we'd get past midfield. But still, defense did just what you wanted to do, you know, in that situation. Punt him. Get a three and out, short punt into the wind, and now your Ranger offense is able to get back out there with good field position. So from the 47, Clark goes wide to the right. TJ close on this side. Bafidis in the backfield. De Hoyas the tailback. Fake it to David. Now we want to throw. Clark on an out route on the far sideline. Makes the catch. Goes out of bounds. That'll be a first down catch of about 11 yards to their 43. And that's a first down. Yeah, getting to throw the ball on early downs is something that uh, trying to mix it up a little bit. Uh, College Station's loading that box and kind of daring you to throw the ball. And, and that time, we, you know, we're better when we're able to throw it when we want to as opposed to when we have to in obvious passing situations. So good drive starter there and a, and a good ball by Ryland. Tight ends on either side, both receivers in tight. Walker out of the shotgun, gives it to DeHoyas, going left, bounces it outside, gets some room, gets dragged down from behind after a gain of about five. We'll call it six on the first down run. There's Thomason again, about 15, 20 yards downfield, taking his guy. If you see him, gets up to a linebacker, and you can see him driving him out of the picture. And Again, good run on first down, six yards. Staying on schedule, and now the whole playbook is open. And, you know, this is obviously still a lot of time left in this ballgame, but it feels like we need a touchdown here for sure. That's their other defensive end, DeGear, Cinco DeGear, who made the play on that one. De Hoyas coming right side, has some blockers, falls forward to the 33. About a yard shy of a first down on three yard run by David. Corbin Johnson among those in on the tackle again. Third and short here, obvious four down territory. Need two touchdowns to get back into this ball game. So you got two downs to get one yard here. So. You can either have two mindsets, get the first down right now or take a shot. They threaten the blitz. Both guys on the near side walked into the gap. Walker hand, changes the play. I'm going to hand this off to DeHoyo, see if we can get it right now. David fights for it, and I think he'll get a first down because of that extra fight. They had him. Uh, Robinson, the safety, and uh, Edwards, the linebacker, had him, but he fought through it and gets a first down. So the ball at the 32, first and 10. Coleman comes in. Clark goes out. Again, a couple of tight ends. A receiver near each side. Walker. Here's Bafidis end around, has a blocker ahead. If he can beat the corner, and he can't. Boy, yeah, just really good pursuit boy, and good. team speed on the defensive side of the ball. Looks like we had the edge there, but they did a good job of recovering and rallying and and uh, and running that down. And, uh, you know, even though seven minutes left, still two-possession game, we need to get going here a little bit. This is DeGear fighting through the blocker along with an outside linebacker, and DeGear just kept it strung out himself. So yeah. a gain of one on first down. Second and nine. Tied in two receivers near sideline. Overset here. Clark on a, we fake the reverse, give it to Hoyas. Got a blocker in front of him, has some room across the 20, the 15. Now down, toppled at the 10 on a good tackle by their other safety, Tony Hamilton. But a nice run on second and long for the Rangers. Yeah, we got into an overset there, uh, had everybody, and then brought, um, I think it was Kyler, in a fly sweep motion, got the eyes of the defense a little bit. We still had numbers over there to pin everybody. Good cut by DeHoyos in a big play. Need to punch it in pretty quick here. We're under, seven, under six and a half minutes to go in the game, down by 12. Rangers knocking at the door. DeHoyos going left, has a seam, 
Falls forward with a little bit of a jump up to the six. So a gain of four. Makes it second in goal from the six. A little urgency as the clock goes under six to go for the Rangers now. Time is not your friend. Yeah, you still got time. Most important thing, though, is is, Get, is getting this touchdown yes, right here, obviously. And so you don't want to be in so much of a hurry that you don't, you know, maybe get a stupid penalty or something like that. And so main thing is to get, get the touchdown here and cut it to a one-score game. Right here, right now. Motion to Hoyas. Left side. Powers yep. his way in the end zone, and that's a touchdown for the Rangers. David De Hoyas gets the score as the Rangers cut the deficit to six with the extra point to come. And again, that's what we talked about is manage the game in the third quarter. You know, try to get it to, you would have loved to have gotten it to the fourth quarter with just a one possession game, but get to the fourth quarter with the game still um, still close. Get your defense to get some stops, make them have a short punt in the win. Now we get the, the good field position, and all of a sudden it's a one score ball game with five and a half to go, but all three timeouts and you know, we're only down by five. Extra point up and good for Clayton Amaya, and the Rangers have cut the deficit to 26-21. So, 5.34 to go. You've got the wind at your back. You can kick it off and keep it in play so you chase them down, or you can kick it through the end zone and make them start at the 25. My, my guess is here is to try to kick it out of the back of the end zone, and hopefully we can do what College Station was able to do at the end of the first half. You know, use the wind to our massive advantage, and that not really, not really let them get out of their own end of the field and keep making them punt and, and keep giving the Ranger offense, um, you know, short field. So we've got probably one more possession, hope maybe two. Uh, but if the defense can go out there and, and do what they did in that in that series before and get us a short field, um, then that's exactly what you want to do and and how you manage a ball game with uh, with the wind that it is like like it is today. Mayo getting the football ready. Getting himself set. Play clock's underway. Keep it in bounds. Again, Tisdale is deep. About the numbers on the far sideline. At the goal line. Amaya. Kicks this one, not a, kind of caught it sideways again, but gets it through the end zone. And they'll start with 5.34 to go, first and 10 from their 25-yard line. Here we go, you know. Um, De defense is forced back-to-back -back punts after stopping a 20-yard penetration for nothing more than a field goal. So defense has done its job yeah. here in the second half. They pretty much shut them out, giving up three points, but that was because we gave them the ball on the 15-yard line after right. a turnover. And so we need, need, need another stop here to give us a shot. A little bit of motion as they've done all day long. Maiden wants to throw. Get him, Has Gavin. a man midway. And it's incomplete. Coverage by the Rangers not too bad. College Station trying to catch us off guard. You know, they're, they might be thinking that we're thinking, okay, just run the ball, kill some time. Um, they've been running the ball effectively, so they decide to come out with a play-action pass the first time, uh, first uh, play. Incomplete pass, stops the clock for us, and second long. De Hoyas on coverage that time. Here's Martinez Brown, shut down at the defensive line. Good job by the Rangers there. A bunch of them, four bodies in there. McLean Garrett was down at the bottom of the pile, I believe. I think he got the biggest part of that. A gain of one, so it's third down and nine. Big play for the defense as they've been all second half. A stop here is critical. They bring the running back out, trips on the near side. A couple of receivers far side, straight drop back. Quick throw, he missed his receiver. They, didn't, they weren't on the same page and that's incomplete and they'll punt into the wind after running off barely 30 seconds. Yeah, it looks like they had their share of miscommunication there. Quarterback thought it was gonna be a quick slant uh, wide receiver kind of went up and around yeah. Gingrich there, and lucky that that wasn't a pick six going the other if way. If he throws that ball with any elevation, it's a pick six. Yep, for sure. But again, now they're punting into the wind. 
the very least, we should get the ball around midfield if we don't get a good return out of it, and it's exactly how you draw it up. This is a low line drive, not much to it. It gets a bounce. We'll have to let it go, but it'll stop about the 38. So Rangers have the ball again with the wind at their own 38-yard line, 4.42 to go when this drive begins. Rangers have a chance down by five to take the lead with a touchdown and see what happens. This is stuff you dream about, right? When you're it growing is. up playing football in the backyard and watching the older guys play high school football and dreaming about one day being out there, and now all of a sudden, game's on the line. you got to go down and score to potentially win the game and uh, to send you, send you to the state, uh, state semifinals. And so um, let's see what we can do with it here. So the Rangers... Walker takes the snap, gives it to Lance, has some room. He'll get four Dang, before he's tackle. spun down. It was Griswold, I think, who got the tackle. I think he's, that was Hamilton. Yeah, you're right, it's Hamilton. He's been making play, all kinds of plays today from the safety position. That was really well blocked up front, and then a safety coming downhill. The one guy you can't block, safety coming downhill and uh, making a play right there. Lance is a little shook up as he comes off. Yeah, so DeHoyos will come in at running back. will come back. I know you just played defense, bud, but uh, get you a <laughs> shot of water and get back out there. Let's go. Second and seven. A couple of tight ends, a receiver nearby on each side. Walker with the snap. DeHoyos coming this way. Muscles his way for about three more. Ball at the 44-yard line. We need to get to their 47. You know, and this is an interesting situation right here. If you don't get it, your defense has been playing so well. you still got three timeouts. I don't know if Coach Hill is thinking it's four down territory, but the play call here that your mindset determines yeah. what that play call is. You know, if it's four down territory, you don't mind handing it off to DeHoyos again to see if he can get it or make it fourth and short. But if you're willing to punt it here, then you might have to put the ball in the air. Walker. Fakes it to DeHoyas, wants to throw. A Clark, an out route, near side, good coverage, and it's incomplete. And I don't think we're going to punt. Yeah, we are. Oh, we are. There it is. Not a bad throw, but really almost impossible with two defenders right there on him. Yep, so we're going to put it in the hands of our defense again, see if we can do exactly what we just did. Pin them really deep, see if we can get a three and out, have to use some timeouts if we need to, um, and then get an even shorter field. So this needs to be a punt that gets them inside their 20 or 10. No doubt. Kind of low end over end kick, we'll get a bounce. Tisdale, does he, well, I thought he was gonna go try to catch it. Well, down at the five, a great punt by Amaya. That's what you need right there, so. That was their safety, Hamilton deep, and. I thought he was going to make a mistake and try to go for it. Yeah, once that ball hits the ground a time or two, yeah. and, you know, we tell our guys get the heck away from it because obviously it's not a round ball that bounces in a direct line, so you never know which, which way that thing's going to bounce. So he's lucky he didn't get off his leg and us recover down by the five-yard line. But here we go. So we got the defense, backed him up to the five-yard line, got all three timeouts, still plenty of time. So we just need to get a stop here and make them punt in the wind and get a short field. Defense has carried you most of the season. We'll see if they can do it again. Martinez Brown had some room, gets tripped up. Is that DeHoyas again? Yeah, touchdown saving tackle there. If DeHoyas doesn't make that tackle, five. might right. be 95-yard touchdown. So committing a lot of guys to the box, a lot of guys stop the run right now. Rangers electing not to use a timeout here on that big first down gain. I think if they'd have stopped him at the line of scrimmage, maybe use it there. Uh, but wanna, you, know, you don't want to waste it, and then they get a first right. down. And so College Station taking their time. I would imagine if we were to get a stop right here, we might use the first of our three. Two backs in the backfield and an H back. Only two receivers out. Martinez Brown coming this way. A little stretch play. Gets stopped at the 14. That'll be a yard shy. It'll be third and one. Can you take a time out there. So third and one, 2.15 to go in the game. Rangers down five at 26-21. They use their first of three second half timeouts. So third and one, kind of a tough, yeah. tough play that you're gonna have to make a play to hold them to yeah. keeping a yard. You're gonna have to 
you know, roll the dice and say they're going to run the football and commit a lot of guys and bring a lot of guys in the interior to try to get a stop at the line of scrimmage or, or, um, or a loss on the play. Um, you know, if College Station, I keep waiting for that quarterback to pull it on one of those zone reads, and if he does, then that might be something that they're thinking right now. Um, it's a it's a good way to do a mix up without having to put the ball in the air. So um, I, th I think his numbers tell you he hasn't done that. He hasn't done it a whole year, lot, but he hasn't done it today. Yeah, so, it might be a time to pull it out of the back pocket if I'm them. But your running back's been playing good all day, and so yeah. you might want to trust him. And obviously, we've got a lot of guys up on the line of scrimmage right now. So third and one, Martinez Brown bullies his way across for a first down. Boy, he used some. That was close. Actually, it wasn't Brown. It was their safety. And he bucked heads with Gavin Woods. Tony Hamilton's his name. And making plays on the defensive end. That time he made a first down for them. Game clock will go under 140 when they snap this ball. Rangers still have two timeouts, and we need to make three more stops. False start. And then they commit a penalty and stop the clock with 147 to go. That's a break. So instead of first and 10, it's first and 15. After the false start, 147 to go in the game. Yeah, the left tackle just flinched. He just flinched a little bit. Jake Utley's his name, a senior at 6'6 and 3'10. Penalty stops the clock. Martinez Brown goes to the right, gets back near the original line of scrimmage, and Larry Hill will use his second timeout. Now one more after this one, so if we get a stop here, then, you know. The, Somehow they're going to run 40 seconds at some point. Yeah, yeah, so obviously. They'll probably run the ball here, and hopefully we get a stop and then use that last timeout, and then their third down is going to come with about a minute and 35 seconds left. They'll run that all the way down under a minute and then hopefully have to punt uh, into this wind, and you know, hopefully we get the ball back with, with some time to be able to go into a two-minute drill. No timeouts, but, uh, but give yourself a fighting chance. Give yourself a chance. The clock stops on any first down. You just have to hustle back to the line of scrimmage and make another play. Ranger defense being called upon again. It's second down and 11 from the 15. Said at last possession, you almost need them to make some a point type play here, yeah. a scoring play. Set your offense up for an easy score or score themselves. It's what they've been doing for the last couple of years. Players tapping their heads as if they saw something. Making calls to each other, making sure that this, the communication is good. The last thing you want is a blown assignment and a first down because the first down essentially ends the ball game here. Two backs in the backfield. Hamilton again, and there's DeHoyas. Oh, they ripped it out. Oh. Almost got the ball loose along with Gavin Woods. Tacked him in the backfield. And we stop the clock for the final time with a timeout there, a minute 38 to go. See the replay here. I thought Gavin was going to rip that thing out right there. He was trying. A good job by their running back. He was trying. Good job by, by uh, their safety. Safety playing running back. Yeah, he does. Uh, he Tony has, Hamilton. He's, he does. Had, he's had carries this year. Yeah, and he's, he's been playing, making plays on both sides of the ball. Good job by him of, of covering that thing up with two hands, making sure that's the last thing they want to do is give the ball over there. So. Uh, be interesting here, you know. I, I would expect there's a 99% chance that uh, that College Station is just going to run this ball, and that way they can run the clock under one minute. But you never know; they could be thinking, you know, we if we get a first down here, we win the game and go to state semifinal. So it'll be interesting to see. I doubt they'll put the ball in the air, but you never know. It's a it's one of those deals that if they do and they convert, then it's a genius call. Yeah. If they don't, 
then uh, then they stop the clock and give us a minute and a half instead yep. of a minute to go. Yeah, and their defense has been playing very well, and so I would be shocked if they didn't just hand the ball off here and say our defense is going to win it for us. But uh, they got three wide receivers out there, so we'll see. Trying to spread us out a little bit. We still got eight in the box. Draw. Little draw. Won't go anywhere. And that's the end. The play clock should start right now, and it does. So we'll have about 50 seconds when the play clock runs out at the end of the punt. They're going to be punting from their own 10-yard line. And so, you know, we don't – this year we put more focus on getting two returners back there to ensure that we get a good return. But, you know, uh, in Smithson Valley's history, we've blocked a lot of punts uh, in the last 30 years. And so – be Stone. interesting to see if Coach Worsty pulls the block front out of his back pocket or if we're going to go for the return. Stoney Pryor is going to wait for the clock to run, the play clock to run down to one and yep. then use one of his timeouts yeah, I'll take a one so they don't timeout. have to hurry. And there's the timeout with 49 seconds to go. Well, the clock just keeps running as it's done. So we'll get the ball after a punt, which will start the clock at just under 50 seconds to go. Yeah, by the time the ball is punted in the play, we should have around 35, 40 seconds left. Again, I keep saying this, we should have good field position, but um, College Station's punter is really, really good. Um, and so not as good a field position as what we would normally face against a, a high school punter going against the wind. But it would be interesting here to see if uh, Coach Hill and Coach Worsty come after this thing and try to block it, or, you know, do you put two guys back there and go for the return and try to set us up? We haven't really had a big punt return yet today. We had a good kickoff return, but so I think uh, Bafidis or DeHoyos might be due for a good run here. Well, we don't tip it off by anything if we're going to come after him. Yeah, and it's risky to come after it right now. Right. You know, just you know, don't want to give a chance for a ref to throw a flag and say roughing the kicker or something like that. So see if we can get good. Snaps field. good. Oh, we, we got, got it. it in there. The ball's down. We're going to tackle him at the end zone. At the five, the six, the seven, they spun him down at the four. Let's go. 34 seconds to go. It's Ranger ball. Oh, my, what a mistake. The snap wasn't awful. He just mishandled it. We had pressure in there. Did we force him to? Let's watch the replay. Snap's good. He's coming this way. There's McLean Garrett coming out. He mishandled it, and he's down at the four. It's Ranger ball. Oh, mama. Wow. Wow. Sometimes it's better be a little bit more lucky than and good, but the loud. Rangers got some breaks there. It is loud in here. 44 seconds to go. Ryler, motion. He'll throw it. Throw it away. Throw, throw the ball away. away. Throw the ball away. We don't have a timeout. Throw the ball away. They got to get up and spike it. They got to get up and spike it. You, you can't be critical, but that's the lack of experience what happens when your backup quarterback's in the game. He's still going to win it for you here. Yeah, I but mean, that, he had to throw that ball away. Yeah, and I get it. You're trying to make a play. You're trying to win the game. A, a big play just happened. We got the ball. Um, but uh, you throw the ball away there, second in goal still. Yes, now we got third. We backed up, and now we, we lost a down, too. Yeah, two plays left. Tougher to run it from the eight. We faked the flip to Hoyas to throw. Face mask. And he got hit. Face mask. And we'll get a penalty, but it's – and that'll be an automatic first down. Yeah, so they had big success on that play that set up the, the last touchdown, and that time DeHoyos was actually about to throw it. So we pitched it to him. They covered it pretty good. We were trying to throw it to TJ right there, and they got a, we got a bailed out with a penalty there. So fresh set of downs, 20 seconds left. Cannot take a sack here. Cannot take a sack. Automatic first down, 20 ticks Half left. The distance to the goal, so we should get on about ticks the left. six. Balls at the six. 
Come on, let's go win this thing. Rylan Walker comes back to the huddle with the play. Play clock steer isn't going. He starts it now. Uh-oh, we just changed the play from the sideline. It's okay, I okay. got plenty of time. Plenty, plenty of time. time, 18 on the game clock. 15 on the game clock. Walker will throw it to Hunt. End zone play, he got hit. And completes the call. Looked like me that as he's going to catch it, the the uh, the receiver got banged, but we'll see. I think that was just a good play by the defender, kind of a jump ball. Extends his arm a little bit there, but yeah, there I, he is again, Anthony yeah. Anthony Tisdale. He's going to Wisconsin for a reason. Yeah, because he can do things like he's that. Really good. He's Walker really good. gets the next play. 16 seconds to go. At least two plays still, left. Still got plenty of From time. From the six, it's, lots of time. If it's not there, throw it away. Don't take a sack. One of our coaches is going bonkers. We'll throw it, little in route. It's caught at the one. Spike it, spike it, spike it, spike it, spike it, spike it. Spike it. You got to get up and spike hey. it. Hey. You got to get up and spike it. They got to stop the, the guys, clock. That's a penalty. He's holding our ball. We got to stop the clock. No, they're holding our ball. Yeah. That's a penalty. It's a delay of game on them. Rangers, get up to the line. They're going to set the ball. Get up to the line. We got to spike it. He can't. He just started the clock already. Massive We've got to have more than one second. We've got to have more than one second. Because that, that's a delay of game. Because we had a chance to spike it with several seconds to go. He's got to change the clock. That should be a penalty on them, an unsportsmanlike conduct. They put four seconds. Okay, so we'll spike it here and have time for one, one play. So the ball's going to be at the at the one. It's be at the half yard line. I know we don't do this, but I'd go under center and quarterback sneak it. But I know that people don't do that anymore. Two seconds to go. One play left. What do you do? What do you do? You've got to run the ball to me. I run the ball, with David DeHoyos, and get behind those big boys. I just say, guys, you got to plow some room. Get a full back in front of him. Get to Hoyas and or get to Bafidas, the best blocker we have in front of him, and we just go into the end zone with David DeHoyas. Play better. clock at ten. We haven't broke the huddle yet. We got to hurry. DeHoyas with Bafidas in front of him. DeHoyas coming right side. He gets stopped. Wow, what a play! That's the ball game. College Station advances to the state semifinals, and the Rangers fall in a heartbreaker. Oh, what a heartbreaker! What a heartbreaker. The Rangers fall 26-21. Here in Pflugerville, Texas. On a Saturday afternoon. In a game that was one for the ages that you didn't win. College Station comes up with a stop of stops to knock down David DeHoyas and win the game. You see both teams shaking hands. College Station advances to the state semifinals in Class 5A. The Rangers go home 12 and 2 on the year and a fabulous year it was. And you see Coach Larry Hill there beside himself that that one got away. They're not a ranger around that isn't heartbroken because this was a game to win today. And College Station comes away with the win. What a game. What a game. What a game. Very proud of this team. It'd be, oh my. It's been easy a lot of times in this game to kind of check it in, not our day wow. type of deal. And they fought all the way, obviously, to the very last play of the ball game. Very last play. It came down to David DeHoyas, off right tackle, had a chance. And one of their guys, I couldn't even tell you, here it is again, here's the replay. And that's Robinson, the all-world safety. 
Harrison Robinson, the senior, came up and made the stop. I don't know if you call that stretch or whatever you call it. He came up and made one more play to stop the Rangers and send the Cougars on to the Class 5A playoffs. Hats off to College Station. They got a heck of a heck of a team. We wish them the best of luck. Obviously, it's a heartbreaking loss and a game for the ages here. And obviously, had to be a loser. And um, somebody had to lose yeah, today. It, it, that's that's going to be a tough one to swallow, right there. It is a tough one. So, 26-21 is your final score. The Rangers fall to College Station's Cougars. They advance 12 and 2 to the state semifinals. The Rangers go home 12 and 2 on the season on a marvelous season for head coach Larry Hill and all of the Rangers. This is something to be very proud of. Uh, that that's a, a remarkable a remarkable finish. Thanks to all our camera people. Thanks to everybody in the technical part. For Brian Hill, this is Tony Brubaker saying good night and God bless. We'll talk to you again soon on the Ranger Network. Go Rangers.